Liam Ken podcast. As always, I'm your host Jack, and with me is Mark. Hello. So we are recording this on the Tuesday. We normally do it on the Saturday, and I normally aim to upload it for the Monday. The last few times we've done that, it's not actually happened, but that that's always the aim. Yeah, pretty much. Doesn't um, always work out. But uh, it was a kind of busy weekend, so Mark ha- had stuff to do, and I was watching the Grand Prix. Uh, I was watching the F1. So, yeah, this is us just getting around to doing the podcast now. And thankfully, we did leave it a bit late because it did give me time to sit and think about uh, the topics that we've got for tonight. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so it gave us a wee bit more extra time to think about that, especially considering our first topic is, is quite a, a a deep one that we can go into. Yeah, it's really wanna, broad like, as fuck. Yeah, I didn't really want to be sitting here for like three hours just going into every little bit. So I was kind of spent the extra time thinking about where i wanted to focus what i was going to mention mm-hmm. uh so it, it it was good in that way that we are doing this a wee bit later yeah it was benefits all around basically yeah, yeah. so um anyway yeah our first topic is um our opinions on the future of gaming particularly gaming tech so we've seen like new things coming out in the last couple of years things like vr and the switch with it being Part portable console, part home console. And everything in between. Part tablet, part <laughs> everything. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, thinking about things like that, I don't think we're going to see any major boundaries pushed within uh, home gaming, like home console gaming or with PC gaming. I mean, we're going to get, like, the PS5 and the next Xbox, whatever they decide to call it. Fuck knows, man. Um, Their names don't even make sense anymore. Yeah, no. And you've also got, like, the PC gaming. You know, you're still going to get, like, upgrades, like, new graphics chips, new sound chips, new motherboards and processors and everything. But nothing's really going... I don't think we're going to see any boundaries really being pushed there. You know, it's just going to be... Like, we'll see games getting more graphically enhanced and Mm -hmm. better looking and maybe even some being deeper story-wise because they're going to have the more memory to support that. But I don't see any major boundaries being pushed in the way that Nintendo have done the last few console generations with the Wii and motion controls. Yeah, I'll give you that. And the Switch and being able to uh, like put that in the dock, have like play that on on like a big telly, and then just going right time to go out. I'll take it, you know, take it with me kind of thing. With and still being able to run all the same games, at pretty much the same FPS and the same graphical quality and and things like that. So. It's kind of things like that I would be focusing on. Like, as I imagine, like the next console generation, um, Nintendo will then take what they've done with the Switch this year mm-hmm. and then find ways to innovate it yet again. Well, bear in mind they weren't the first ones to try it, and they kind of built off the idea of a PSP because originally you were meant to be able to play games on that. Yeah. Just it was a, uh, it was shoddy as fuck. Yeah, like they they took someone else's idea there and they did. Um, they did some of their own innovation because the PSP was, you know, it and was a handheld, handheld console, yeah. um, and you could play PS3 games with it, and you could use it, like, the PS Vita following that, you could use that as another controller for yeah. the PS4, um, but the fact that you can, with the, P- with the Switch, you didn't need, like, that other console to play these games. Oh, no, definitely. It's a completely updated and more innovative gaming experience yeah. all around. I'm not even going to argue that. Um, and, and you know what? Just, like, see for being such a tiny console. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I've been wanting to do a video for so long about Nintendo. And, like, depending gaming on... Gaming historian! And depending on how um, I wanted to word it, it could sound either positive or negative and t- towards Nintendo. And it was, like, either going to be uh, their greatest weakness is their biggest strength or their biggest strength is their greatest weakness um, because they are always innovating how games are played like with like the Wii and the Wii U because like, the Wii U is kind of what the Switch was meant to be mm. what we were expecting the Switch to be but instead of being able to take the Joy-Cons out you know it was all fixed on the one screen Yeah, but um even at that, like they had a Star Fox game out, and you could move the cat that move the screen around. It had an accelerometer inside. All right, and Fuck. you could use that as like the the tablet bit to aim, mm-hmm. which was really really cool. Um, so you know they're always innovating stuff, but there are built but every time 
they build underpowered consoles compared to what Sony and Microsoft are bringing out. I think our agreement there would be though, and need to bring out more games. I feel. Yeah, well, that was the thing with the Wii U. There wasn't much support from outside of Nintendo. You didn't have Square Enix, Bethesda, EA. Yeah. Uh, you know your big third-party companies building many, like creating many games for, or even porting particular. Well, to right, I, I, I haven't even heard much myself about the Wii U. It all seems to be just a um, Switch. Yeah, well, the Wii U when that when that released, they announced it at E three, and to be fair, it just looked like the tablet bit was an extension, like a, an extra peripheral mm-hmm. for the Wii. Like when the way they marketed that um, wasn't particularly great. It, no, it did just look like an add on for the Wii. It didn't look like a whole new console. Yeah, and then we got the, then it came around. We seen it was a whole console itself, and. Don't get me wrong, while it was a commercial flop, and none of the games that came out for it were particularly great, to be fair. Came out with the original Wii, to um, be fair. But it was it was underestimated, it was underrated, because mm-hmm. it was a really fun console. Like, Breath of the Wild was on it at the same time as it came out the Switch and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But it was it was a fun game it was a fun games console, but no one really believed in it. And no one really uh, understood it. Yeah. You know? But that's all changed with the Switch. Because we've now got, like, Bethesda are heavily supporting it. Just a bit. Um, Square Enix have made their return to Nintendo with Octopath Traveler. And we'll be talking later on about what's happening with Square Enix and Nintendo uh, in the future. Like, actually, even just, like, four days ago, all this actually started, Mm -hmm. like, properly, what we're going to talk about. So, you know, we are seeing, like, more third-party companies coming back to Nintendo, which is really, really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that they're innovating how we play games yeah, through things like the Switch, it does put a lot of companies off developing games for them. At the start, at least, like, once you see how the user base grows, then we'll see more companies develop for it, if it depending on how the growth is. And how popular it is as well. Like that's why we've not seen a Pokemon game for the Switch yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we we've seen yeah. the trailers obviously, and we we know that there's we've got three games coming. Po- Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. That's mm-hmm. two games. Yeah, it's the same game, but it's two games. Okay, I get you. Yeah. I'm I'm going to class that as two games, right? <laughs> uh, even though it's one development cycle, but um, it, it's it's two titles, okay? And we've got Pokemon Switch coming next year. Mm-hmm. You know. Because Game Freak, when they bring out new games for like the Nintendo console, despite the fact they're a first-party developer essentially, so like they're part, I think they're part owned by Nintendo. Well, I've never seen them do anything else. So, like, they went like they took a long time to go from the Game Boy Color to the Game Boy Advance, yeah, and then again from the Game Boy Advance to the DS. Like the only kind of time they jumped straight on it with a uh, with a generational change of consoles was when you went from the 3DS to the new 3DS. Hmm? Uh, they, they completely changed up the hardware and the infrastructure for the games. Oh, okay. Uh, for, the, for the console, for the, the new line. All right, okay. Uh, you, you can tell, because some of them will say 3DS and some of them will say new 3DS. The ones that say new on them are the newer generation of them. All right. Um, it's slightly different hardware and software inside the console. Can't just give it a new name. It's new. No, well, because it, it looks the same and it pretty much operates the same, but it was just enough changes that it was more powerful, could handle more games, and uh, things like that. I just said Mark II. Simple. Because that way it's not just new. Yeah, well, you know, they, they were the same with the Switch as well. You know, it was taking its time. There was only one game that came out pretty quick for um, the Switch from the po- from the Pokemon Company slash Game Freak, and that was one that they done in collab with Bandai Namco, and that it was Pokémon Tournament. Oh, all right, yeah. Which is essentially Tekken with Pokemon. So good, so very very good. It's so much fun, but like the other one that we're seeing being the the other form of gaming we're seeing being developed a lot just now is VR. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
And like, because we we've been messing about occasionally with the PSVR, which I bought over the summer, mm-hmm. uh, especially with games like um, GT Sport, which is a fantastic game. Uh, it, hell. Oh, it's a fantastic game in VR. Um, out with the VR, it's it's good, but it's definitely worth playing in VR. Yeah, but like, I'd love, I, I'd love, really love to see more kind of fighting games or shooters and adventure games. Mm-hmm. Like we've got Skyrim VR and Doom VFR. VFR, virtual freaking reality. Oh fuck's sake! Right, come on, it's Doom. Fuck, it's sake, probably not even man. freaking. As you no, know. Um, <laughs> virtual beeping. But. Um, yeah, so we're, we are getting more adventure games like that, but one thing I would really love to see is a peripheral that would allow you to walk, run, and stuff like that. Like, uh, have you ever heard of the Sega Activator? No. It was a peripheral for the Sega Master System, I believe. Um, Gave me a story in it again. And it's, it's like an octagon that you fit around yourself, and it's got sensors in it. Huh, okay. And each sensor represents a button, so as you put your hand over it, it counts it as hitting a button and it was meant for use for games like mortal kombat okay i have had one of those things before for like ps2 for fighting games it's like a dance yeah. mat but there's like big uh poles and if you kind of put your arm past like the invisible beam of light it counts as a move yeah pretty much yeah so you know, if you get to like use a like step forward and that's so you going forward and all that shit yeah well, Fuck I would love sake, to see man. one kind of like that, but it's all got beads or balls of some kind mm-hmm. that are, they're not connected to each other. They're loose, but they're tightly enough packed that they won't pop out. Okay. And as you, as you would take a step forward, it would roll. So you would be stationary, but you could walk on it. Kind of like a treadmill, but not uh, I get tre- it. I get it. All right. It's so like a kind of circular platform kind of thing, but yeah. if you think of a step forward... I'll intuitively kind of go back as you go, all right, yeah. got you now, yeah. Now, just because I said balls, I'm like, man, you're going to fucking fall in that. What the hell? Um, but yeah, okay, I get what you mean. Yeah, you, like, because if you if you had just a treadmill, you know, it, it would have to go, like, kind of back or forward. Mm-hmm. You couldn't wrap it round, like, a circular thing and have it move. I mean, that would work, but you need to, like, have, a, like, a strap on, right? <laughs> like a like a belt type thing. Yeah. I like, kind of connectors, so, four, like, four corners or whatever. That way, it can like kind of pull you back from yeah. going off it. So if you've got a helmet on, you don't know what you're fucking doing. Yeah. You're just like, oh, where am I? Oh wait, I'm in the kitchen. I started in the sitting room. What the fuck? But um, I would love to see kind of things like that, especially for uh, games like Skyrim. You know, I would now, think it would be fantastic. Yeah, but you be around, you, you kind of go running. Yeah, like, that's like that's well down the line, man. That's yeah. like so far down the line. But I think that might be the next big thing for VR is some sort of platform. Where you can then control movement as well, especially depending on what how, what kind of games you're playing. Obviously, like if you're playing like a racing game, you just need a seat, wheel and pedals, and that's you. Uh, maybe a gear shifter if you if you want to go like proper, like using instead of the flappy paddles that are on a <laughs> flappy paddle. That's what they're called, <laughs> flappy paddles. Um, oh, fucking hell. It's a flappy, flappy paddle. paddle. <laughs> um, oh, instead of having like paddles, um, you would have that. Like, you can have a gear shifter like the Logitech mm-hmm. uh, G29, G27, uh, depending on whether you get it for PlayStation or Xbox. Okay. It has uh, has the flappy paddles, but uh, it also has a extra peripheral which you can buy with a gear a H shifter. All right. Um. So you know you could you could use that or you could use the paddles, but you know all you need is you know a seat and you know your your wheel and pedals essentially yeah um for games like fruit ninja or monster of the deep or you know your simulation games like surgeon simulator job simulator mm-hmm. you just kind of need to stand there and like wave your arms about and, and things like that and but for games like skyrim I, I, while i'd really i've not played skyrim vr right but i would sound say solid as fuck it's, it looks good but the problem is i would really want to be having like O- like if I'm using the Oculus Rift, the HTC Vive, or the PSVR, like yeah. instead of having a controller in my hands, mm-hmm. I would love to have like the the PS Move, PlayStation Move controllers, or the the Vive and uh, Oculus grips. Yeah, you know, I'd really love to have them and have them control my hands, and then have be have the ability to walk as an input. All right, okay. Because I think I don't know how you actually control movement in the game. Fuck those, man. But I would really love to see see going like that. 
well, for me, like, it, like, it varies what I'm expecting or I'm hoping to see. It would be a better argument. Like, uh, obviously, for years, Christ, from maybe when we were just born, the idea of VR was prominent. Yeah. So it's, it's, it isn't a new thing, just the technology has gotten to the stage where we are finally experiencing yeah. something like we grew up with. Yeah. Like, even half the cartoons, I don't know, like, if you remember this shit, like, from growing up, and they had uh, ideas what would VR be like in the future. Yeah. And it's just like, well, how long away is that kind of thing? Yeah. Dude, ha- stop. Expand your vocabulary, bruh. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, like, uh, we were. Fuck, man. W- watching those things as kids, you know, I was thinking, you know, that's going to be something I'm going to see when I'm, like, really old. You know, too old for playing video games. No such thing. I. I honestly hope when it comes to the age of me getting my pension, I'll be so I can go out, buy a new game, and just sit down and be like, it's time to play Pokemon 40. <laughs> Come Mate, on, I'll... Pikachu, let's go catch whatever the fuck now. Mate, you'll be playing Pokemon, whatever they call the 40th series of the game. I'll be playing Final Fantasy a million. You, your pro, pro whole icon just be you, you just be in there. Like, oh, I've gone so far, I can just be an old man playing Final Fantasy <laughs> in-game. It's like, dude, why is there no dude here? I don't know, man. Just, just fuck it. <laughs> Kill him. Uh, I don't know. Um, It really does vary. Like, like I've got, obviously, high hopes for where we are, because honestly, that's where the future's going. I think everything's going to eventually become VR. I, I don't think everything's going to become VR. But I do think home gaming mm-hmm. is going to certainly be most the vastly vr but i do see things like um portable gaming things like becoming more like the switch rather than like the ds mm-hmm. where it is you can still like play it on a telly yeah um but you can still take it on the go with you you know okay so your future gaming is more like fully powered, upgraded handhelds, basically. Well, no, like no. fully integrated to the main consoles when you're around them as well. Yeah, but also, like I do think, like things like PSVR, HTC Vive, and the Oculus Rift are going to be, like for home gaming. Yeah, that is the way of the future. Mm-hmm. But for portable gaming, and it's going to be more like the Switch, where you will have a dock and you be able to play it on a bigger screen. Yeah, at home. So that does make sense, methodly. If you're at home, but. It'll still have the same, you know, like, because it's, what, a, a 10-inch screen or something yeah. that the Switch has got. I don't know. I'm not very it's good at n- numbers. But it's not it's not particularly big. It's, it's a lot bigger than most other portable consoles. Yeah. But it's not, you know, it's not massive. Mm-hmm. And I expect that while the, it'll probably stay roughly the same size, it'll still have the whole being able to integrate with a television and play it on a bigger screen, especially multiplayer games. Yeah. Um, things like Mario Party and stuff, you know, that's better played on a TV than on the actual Switch. Mm-hmm. But it that's going to have the functionality for using multiple Switch screens. Yeah. Um. So you wouldn't be able to do that on a big telly, but um, it will have the option. Um. I imagine that if home gaming is moving towards VR, then portable gaming, while that won't be VR if it goes the way I think it's going where it's, everything's going to be more like the Switch where you can play it on the, the big screen like on your home telly as well as playing it on the go when you have it connected to the dock mm-hmm. it'll have VR games you know like obviously not this generation of the Switch yeah because Nintendo don't seem to have any intention of making VR But I think it would be a I'm bit of thinking, a step back to be fair I'm thinking 15-20 years down the line here well, you said an interesting point. I think logically, as home consoles evolve, it will become a point where, like you said, you can take them with you, which yeah. m- which makes sense because the Switch has taken off like hell. Oh yeah, it's it's not it's weird, right? Because the numbers are, are kind of a bit skewed, right? Because mm-hmm. most families just have one Switch, if they do have a Switch. Yeah, you don't like because I mean in our house we've got. Two PS3s, two PS4s, mine and my brothers. Uh, mm. we've, got th- we've got two laptops. Uh, we've got two Xboxes. Everyone's got one thing, basically. Yeah. Um, but I've got the only Switch. 
but then most families only have but in japan uh that's not the case like so i'm talking like i'm talking like in the west so america and europe yeah but in like the asian market most families have more than one they have one each um because what nintendo are doing over there like particularly in japan is they're selling the switch bundle Mm -hmm. so every family has a switch and then they're selling the secondary switch bundle which is the screen the joy cons and a USB-C cable for charging. All right, okay. The families will share the dock, but everyone will have their own switch. Interesting. Hmm, that's that's different. But they're also selling it at about twenty five percent of the price. So you know, about twenty five percent off, and that's your that's essentially the price of the dock you're you're knocking off of it. Fucking hell, that's not bad. Um, but they also don't come with like games, like they don't come bundled with games. Yeah. Whereas obviously, obviously over here you tend to because obviously the that this uh, this package is intended for families who already own a Switch. Yeah, so we expect so, to have tons of games anyway. So yeah, they'll have games, and if they don't have games, it will be because they bought bought them from like the store, mm-hmm. uh, like the online store. Ah yeah. So it'll be just a case of downloading them onto the Switch anyway. So. So yeah, I mean, obviously that means the idea of uh, gaming as a home largely going to be a portable affair. Which is cool. I'm not going to argue. I mean, I think I did hear uh, PlayStation are going to bring bringing out their own a new handheld to replace the like, kind of failing Vita. I don't know if we're going to still doing it, but I have heard I, they're considering it. I don't think they're going to be bringing out a replacement for the Vita. Uh, no, not I've a replacement. A full seen, on update, upgrade. I've seen rumors of what the PS5 is going to be like, though. Ooh. I've seen concept art of like none of this is official from Sony. I hate concept art. I, I don't see the point in looking at it. I mean, console's a console. Yeah. If it works, it works. Like again, like I've seen various like none of it is official from Sony. This is people going. This is what I think it's going to look like. All right. I've seen some amazing designs doing that. Some I seen one that looked just like the PS4. Okay. And I was like, right. If you're going to do that, why don't you just take a picture of a bloody PS4? <laughs> um, but I seen one, and it looked kind of like a Switch. All right. But instead of like the Joy-Con, well, you know, the the the, the removable controllers being like slide down the middle, and then take like, and it's perfectly in the middle of this like at the ends of the screen. It was just up slightly from the screen, and it clipped. It was two clips at the top that they clipped onto. Which it, don't get me wrong, it looked kind of cool. Hmm. But it just didn't look as clean and smooth as the Switch does. But at the same time, there was that, the fact that people seem to think that PlayStation is going to follow Nintendo on this one for the next generation. Mm, it's not necessarily, which, but it could be cool. Which is actually more likely than Xbox, like Microsoft doing... Have I ever had doing, a handheld? Um, yes. Have we? Yes. What? It's called the Nokia Lumia series. <laughs> They're called Windows phones. Uh, that's the closest to... Well, they did, they did play games. Oh, like, I had one. You know what I did. were gash. No, no. I had Snake. Shut up. <laughs> right. Um, in talking about that, I did uh, uh, the next generation of, like, of PlayStation being uh, portable. I just thought of a concept myself just there. TM, the film was going to try and bump it. You know, you get the original uh, PS ones, right? So you yeah. like you press the thing down, it opens up. Imagine that same kind of concept, but you can lift out the central bit and then open up. It's a bit bigger, but it could be kind of cool. Yeah, that would that would be pretty cool. Um, obviously, the uh, only downside is if you think of like shape wise, the uh, Switch is obviously more easily like pocketable, yeah. whereas this one would still be like uh, you'd have to put it in your bag. But at the same time. I know, it's definitely a nostalgia benefit for anyone who yeah. grew up with PS1. I think, well, because I've, obviously we've had the NES and the SNES minis, the C64, the Commodore 64, mm-hmm. that's got a mini version that released last two months ago. Right. I think over here it's it's going to release, I think, next month in, in the States, but it released about two months ago here. Mm-hmm. Um. Atari are doing one through Indiegogo, which we talk, we spoke about about a month ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. They, they're they doing the 5600, I think. Yeah, seems all, all these are coming back, man. Um, and Sega have done a few 
like Mega Drive and Master System, I think. All right, okay. They've re- they've done minis of them, and I've also heard rumors that Nintendo are doing yet another mini console, and it's going to be the Game Boy. Mm-hmm. Although it's, I think they're just going to bring out an, a Game Boy preloaded with games, rather than bringing out a mini version because it's pretty small to begin with. But I, I did hear rumors of that we might get a PS One mini. Huh. Now the problem with this is licensing. Yeah. Now, with the Commodore sixty four, the Atari, they're all original, like first party games. Mm-hmm. With the Nintendo ones, they're mostly third part, first party games: Zelda, Mario, Yoshi, yeah, Mario Kart, and so on. But you did have a couple of other games that weren't first party: mm-hmm. Contra, um, Final Fantasy, uh, Ghosts and Ghouls. Which is actually called Ghosts and Goblins. Is that uh, I remember we called Ghosts and Goblins, but then I seen it on the console. And it's Ghosts and Ghouls or Ghouls and Ghosts. I can't remember which way around it was. I was like, "Fuck's sake!" So I was like, "Mate, that's Ghosts and Goblins," and they're like, "No, it's Ghosts and Go- uh, Ghouls and Ghosts." I was like, "What the hell is this?" But no, um, because like uh, some of the first party content that used to be Sony mm-hmm. isn't Sony anymore. All right. The likes of Crash Bandicoot, Spyro the Dragon, they're now uh, one's Activision, and the other is um, it's not not well. It used to be Naughty Dog, mm-hmm. but it's no longer Naughty Dog. I can't remember no who owns it now. But they're no longer first party titles, as we see with them being released on Xbox and Switch and PC as well mm-hmm. as the, the PlayStation. So, like. With with some of your classic PlayStation games like uh, Grand Theft Auto, like the original one, mm-hmm. and uh, FF7, you know, that's not too big of a deal because it's still Rockstar and Square Enix that own them respectively. Yeah. You know, they've not changed hands, so that one's easy enough. But because these were first-party titles that are no longer owned by the first party, mm-hmm. it, does, it does create... A little bit of um, an issue, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't be that bad that it's impossible. But it might just take them a bit longer to actually do it. But I did hear about a PS One Mini, which does sound good. Damn, you know so much about random shit, man. Fuck. Oh, do, do, do you want to know something? No, no, no. Anyway, back to VR. <laughs> no, uh, one of the main things I'd love to see in the future, aside from obviously. Getting the full dive gear, which I hope to get, but well, that oh. was something my bro- me and my brother were talking about this topic. Yeah, and I was talking about how I'd love to see VR become more interactive with you know I was talking about the kind of platform thing earlier. Yeah, right? and my brother was saying he would love to see something like Nerve Gear mm-hmm. from sort of sort of online. And you or you would have said no 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 you're not gonna do it. Uh, yeah, I would not. I would not like. Don't get me wrong. It does sound really cool. But my idea of VR is being able to actually physically move and not being strapped into a chair. See, I'm in, in two I've minds. I've seen Sword Art Online. <laughs> not oh, much It's of it. not all like that. The second season's completely fine. I've seen enough of Sword Art Online to put me off of Nerve Gear, right? <laughs> ah, you always. See, what interests me, right, is while we're talking about how home gaming is going to basically become handhelds, right? Yeah, I think as VR gets bigger, it's actually not going to be for home use more as, as such. I think for a good length of time, it's going to be more like, uh, you know, like, you know, like gaming cafes. Yeah. Like VR cafes, right? No, I'd like, love to see one of them pop up. Well, I did go into one uh, in Mountain Keynes. It was random. I was like, I've never seen it before. I was like, fuck. So you can rent time out in a, a VR yeah. game and you just yeah, fuck there about. was something like that in in the game in Glasgow, the one on right. Union Street. Uh, there, there's one like that, and there's actually a wee shop opened up in in Glasgow called VR Simulation, and most of it's just uh, racing games, mm-hmm. but they've got the full racing rig uh, and VR. And like when I say the full racing rig, I mean like, have you ever been to like the cinema and got the D box? Not yet. It's been one of those things. I'm like, where it's the, is it worth the it? chairs that know. move? Yeah, they've got essentially that in VR. See, that sounds epic. And they'll also, like, they're so, 
like th- these are guys who are passionate about racing games yeah. and passionate about VR. So it's not just a case of you go in and go, right, I want to drive a Mazda MX-5 around Brands Hatch. You know, they go, right, you, you turn up and go, right, I want a challenge. What would you recommend? And they'll go, well, we suggest, you know, driving a Lamborghini Aventador around Laguna Seca. Because Laguna Seca has like a four foot drop mid track. It's where the fuck you've watched, during you've corner, watched and played so much a racing During a corner gym, called man. the Corkscrew, which is. Uh, well, uh, this was a famous corner, right? Because there is this massive <laughs> elevation drop. Um, But not like if you turn around and said something like, I want to drive a 2018 F1 car around the Nurburgring Nordschleife track. Mm-hmm. Which is, you know, the world famous thirteen mile long racetrack in Germany. Okay. Um, they would say no, no, it's too difficult. The car's not built for things like that, and they would recommend a car which is just as fast, just handles just as well, but is more suited to the track based on the the design of mm-hmm. the car, because like you would just like annihilate the front wing on like the carousel, which is a banked corner. All right. So, um. They, they're super passionate about like vr and racing games so they can help you choose the right car for the right track or the right track for for the car you've picked mm-hmm. uh but yeah I'm, I'm i was talking about getting us all to do a lap of the nurburgring in an f1 car okay on gt sport i'm actually debating uh sending an email to these guys and seeing if we could rent out a a couple of simulators and record it's dear as fuck i'll, I'll tell you that now uh from what i was told it's a about ten pound per person per hour. Well, well no. at this place in Kirky, not Kirky, uh, Glasgow. Mm, we'll see, but yeah, again, just uh, uh, I don't know, it varies. Um, but yeah, just my general idea was obviously it's easier to get a full rig set up for racing. It's just, obviously all the shit's there. But just the idea of like, even um, the motion sensors, pads and stuff, I, I think it lends itself better to a commercial area Yeah. where we can actually properly set up, uh, set up all up safely, you get more spacing. I think logically, it, it could end up like that. Literally, you could just rent it out for like a couple of hours and then you just have a full-on game tournament. Yeah. So I honestly think, give it maybe like five years, you're going to have just tons of gaming simulation areas all over the place uh, i i agree I, th- I think that is highly likely um I, I i would love to see the re-emergence of the kind of internet cafe with um like there used to be a place in glasgow uh was do you remember the hmv store on buchanan street i'm not that old yes i do Right. <laughs> I'm old enough. I always did love that. I'm really old. I always did love the uh, so purely just because of the architecture. I love being able to go in and up places. Uh, yeah. uh, just... Right, well, on the second floor, Yeah. they had, I think it was called Gamer Zone. Yes. I remember. And they oh, had, I was... like, you walked in, there was a couple of racing rigs there. And was it? I... I always remember the guys in the um, computers. And then up the back, Yeah. you had uh, two rows, well, two desks yeah and there was about 18 computers on them ah yeah that's where we're looking and at. then between, cool crew hung out between the between the the pcs and the racing rigs you had a couple of couches yeah uh, each of them had uh, a couple of xboxes and a couple of playstations i think it was x360s and ps3s at the time god um, i miss hmv you have such a good store and you know you could <sighs> depending on what you were renting out Aye. like i think the pcs were a fiver an hour the racing rigs were a tenner an hour. I bet. And the PS3 and the Xbox, I think they were seven fifty an hour. Uh, but the difference was with the PCs, you could only play whatever games they had on Steam. Well, logically, that makes sense. And with the PS3 and the Xbox, you could play any game. Oh, because back then, obviously, you didn't have to I, download the shit ton. Well, this was also the same place you went to buy the games. Oh, so right. they all They had extra copies behind for the area. Ah, right, for okay. the gamers own area so it was just basically any game they had in stock you could play that's pretty decent it was kind of you could have essentially used it as a try before you buy it makes so much more sense M- more places should do that seriously fuck's sake so yeah I, re- I remember going there I used to go up there and play um, Star Wars The Old Republic oh fuck's sake man no, Knights of the Old Republic okay that's a bit better the MMO yeah that's a bit better um I don't know like gaming wise I know the future is looking really bright, but it's also looking really dear as well. Yeah. 
I honestly think the best place for VR, like you said, is cafes eventually. Yeah. It just makes more more sense. The, the thing that does worry me, though, um, about the future of gaming mm-hmm. is, you know, we, we are seeing all this innovation and the thing that worries me is cost. Like, I'm, I'm not talking about, like, cost to us as consumers. Oh, that'll go up low. I'm talking about, like, as... as companies innovate more it's going to get more expensive to make these new innovations so it's probably going to end up being less games i'd imagine so we might actually see some companies going backwards instead of innovating going back to like a couple of generations ago where it is just a console and you sit and play it you know maybe more powerful than the current like the the generation before Mm -hmm. that this is released but it's just going to be you know like xbox playstation Nintendo home consoles, play it on a telly, nothing new. Well, you know? well there'll be obviously new games and new stories. Aye, to no, no, but, I mean, but yeah, there's no, no innovation, innovation in terms. Yeah. Well, not every company can afford to do it. That's why yeah, there's no, only no. really, what, four big co- um, games? Yeah. Games? Well, well, at the PlayStation, moment. Xbox, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo. And PC. And PC. However, like, I did mention this. Last yeah, podcast. I think I know what you're gonna say. Google yeah. are talking about making a console, and there is rumors that Apple oh, might fuck. be coming back to the gaming market. Right, how would like say you get Google and Apple right? They make a console. Is that where work around to make PC gaming console gaming? If you get me, no, because I think there will be actual consoles. That's the thing. Yeah, but you know what I mean, like, like cause I don't think it'll be. I don't think it'll play PC games. Well, it would be kind of cool, though, admittedly. Because to play PC games, it would be a PC. Um, yeah, but... But it, I, I, don't, I don't fully know. Um, I just know that Amazon have been buying up uh, game game development companies. Seriously? Yep. Huh. Uh, with the intention of releasing a games console. An Amazon console? Not Amazon, uh, Google. Fuck you, man. I was broken because I was like, their working conditions are shit and they're going to make consoles. Um, well, Google. Well, Google, Google hmm. are doing this um, with the intention of release, and these would be first party developers. I can't remember. How, have they bought up any big ones? Any ones I don't know? I can't remember any of the ones that they bought up. So probably not one. Well, probably it, not. Well, if it's going to be like your first console, probably the first couple are going to be a bit gash. Yeah. Like just kind of tweaking now and then. Because I mean. Yeah. The PlayStation didn't get it properly hit now off till I'd argue two and two or yes, three. Two. Yeah, so one was okay, but wasn't like pure wow. And then for me, I think the 360 was when the Xbox hit it off. And then for obviously for the Wii, it was it was Switch. The Switch is for, for Nintendo. Nintendo even yeah. Um, I I would say it was probably the SNES originally that like that was a lot more popular than the NES. You're going well beyond me, but oh, I'll take your word for you. You know your shit. The, the second console they ever released. Sound. Um, yeah, the well, first one always seems to be gash, no matter what you do. And then they had the N64, which kind of it sold well, and the games that were released on it were really good. Mm-hmm. But the problem was that that was originally meant to be the PlayStation. Uh, yeah, right, yeah, so I remember that. After the SNES, they teamed up with Sony to do games with, with the CD format. Mm-hmm. But also have a port for cartridges, Oof. for but not not to make new games on cartridge, but for backwards compatibility. Yeah. So they were thinking about you know people enjoying the game libraries they already had on the current console. They were already thinking about this. Yeah. Way before it was an issue. But they didn't feel that CDs were going to kick off as a, a format for gaming. That's a bit embarrassing. And so they split. It was actually originally going to be called the PlayStation as well, mm-hmm. but Sony had the rights to that name. Thank so, God. Um, when they then went on, done the N64, Sony released the PlayStation, and then Square Enix jumped ship from Nintendo to Sony as a mostly first-party developer Yeah. for a while um, because they were making FF7, which if it had released on the... The cartridge based N64 would have bombed, would have required at least 10 cartridges. <laughs> it's bad enough for four discs. 10? Three, three discs. Was it? FF8 and 9 were four discs. Um, FF7 was three. Oh, fair enough. Um, Still, fuck. But I think yeah, it was the first game I ever played that required that many discs. But the problem with um, 
if they'd done it on the Nintendo is you can't take a cartridge out while the game's playing and replace it. Because, I mean, you have you ever seen the, the 007 Golden Eye game? Uh, yeah, I've seen it. Have you ever seen the Make Everything Freak Out glitch? Is that when you pull it out and put it back in? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that exact one. You don't even need to pull it all the way out. You just need to, like, slightly move it to the, like, just pull it up a wee bit at one side and then just everything on the screen. So that, like, I said, anything that can move on the screen freaks out. That put me off. Um, yeah, I've seen some amazing like gifs and memes of it. It's fantastic. Mm-mm. Um, but you know, that was that was that. Mm. Um, but then yeah, then it kind of slowly started to die down with Nintendo. Then we uh really revitalized it because that was the best selling console of that generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the best selling console of all time, I believe, was the PlayStation Two. Uh, no closely, closely followed by the Wii, which was the next generation along, and then really, I don't think. Yeah. I suppose it was quite a big hit. And then you shit. had the Wii U, and then the Switch. The Switch is really, really, really kicked off uh, for Nintendo again. Yeah, I wouldn't even argue that. It was pretty cool. And it also seems to be like as well as new games coming out for it. Like Breath of the Wild was originally developed for the Switch, despite the fact they brought it out on Wii U as well. Yeah. But it's also simply become a haven for retro games, like uh, not even just retro games, but older games. Because we've got Skyrim that's just came out, Wolfenstein Two, Saints Row Three's coming out for it, mm-hmm. uh, Diablo Three. That's, a, I mean, it's not. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's, it's not old, old, but yeah, yeah, you get what I mean. It's not pure ancient. Is it it's not the newest game in the series? I don't think. Or no. Maybe, well, no. You know, yeah, it's so far. Diablo yeah. Three is the most recent, but it's still. Yeah, but I keep, they keep updating it. Quite a way, way old, you know. Is it what ten years old that game? It's not ten, is it? I think so. Wow, my voice is squeaky. Um, I think. I don't so. know ten years. Jesus. Maybe. Um, well, it's held up well for a ten-year-old game. Fuck. And then you've got some of the games that we're going to be talking about later on. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, fuck's sake, man. I mean, I know one of them is. Uh, no one you wanted to. T- you... Twenty-one years old. So, uh, I think you know. Was that when you told me about? Ah, uh, okay. That's not. That. Is that old? That released in 1997. Fucking hell. Okay, that was well that's well done. That's not the same game, though, is it? That doesn't look like the same game. Yeah. Wow. Okay, then. Jesus. Uh, I'll, I'll, I think yeah, you, you might be thinking a different game, what I'm going to say. Well, well, we'll talk about it later? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, drink. Is that more or less the future of gaming? I, I think so. Like, Unless we want to talk about software or anything, I think we've pretty much covered it. I don't think I could keep up with you in well, software. I mean... We've not covered everything we can talk about, but I think we've covered everything that we want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> essentially, to sum up, uh, console gaming is eventually just going to become handheld. Because, I mean, the Switch is the ultimate goal between. Uh, so, I, I think that does herald the kind of yeah. new coming of console games, which makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it, like, because the thing is, like, if we didn't get the Switch, mm. I wouldn't have seen it going that way because with the DS you can't exactly play things like Skyrim and stuff on no. it. And the, the PlayStation handhelds, while they were good... They are good for their own games. Trying to play... They, uh, weren't, they weren't great for like the AAA games. No, no but cash. Things like, um, but see, like the kind of smaller handheld based game, like games that were built for playing on the go. Oh, uh, uh, Final Fantasy Crisis Core. Crisis Core was Fucking exactly one I was thinking of. I loved that one. You that know, was well done. I loved they were, that. They were great for these games that because that was more filler than an actual game, really, because it explained... Mate, what... I thought I liked that game better than Final Fantasy. Well, not looking at the game as such, more the protag. Yeah, but no, it, it wasn't built to be a game on its own. Yeah. It was meant to be kind of... Give you more knowledge. Enjoyed as part of Final Fantasy VII, as well as uh, the PS2 game, uh, Dirge of Cerberus. And that was epic as fuck. You know, like, damn man. They those were games that weren't built for enjoyment on their own. They were built to be enjoyed as part of the part of the Final Fantasy Seven. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah. But um, without the Switch, I wouldn't have seen it going that way because things like the DS wouldn't be able to handle that, and Sony just they make good handhelds. They just can't get a, a decent library. Yeah. Like they've got like like we've just mentioned, they had a couple of hits on on it with uh, Crisis Core and stuff, but overall the library was a bit kind of meh. 
Yeah, it was just a lot of gash. So and even the good ones, you know, just you know, strictly you're trying to port over the superior games. You're like, this isn't gonna go well. Yeah. Um, and personally, for me, while VR is the future as well, I think for a while it'd be better off personally in cafes because they have they'll have a proper money to give you full setup as opposed to you trying to get. Not, there's nothing wrong for PS headset, right? It's cool. It's great. Yeah, it's great, right? But if you want a full on VR experience, you want a full get up, you want the yeah. space to do it. Best place to do it is a shop which caters ex- like exclusively to that experience. So yeah. that personally, I'd say um, within the next like five years, they'll pop up more. And then when they refine the VR experience to the point where you're like, okay, now we can start rolling out a proper, realized VR experience at home, and then I'd be like, well, Rad, now it's coming home. Yeah. Until then, though, I'd say, yeah, VR cafes or something, that's they're going to be a big thing, I hope. I hope you enjoyed our talk on the future of gaming. Maybe next, maybe another time we might talk about software or, like, just the way games are going to be in general. We yeah. might do that. That will be mainly, yeah, you would cover the first part because I wouldn't know anything. I'll cover the random banter element. Oh, I, I can cover that, the whole topic on software in probably about 30 seconds. Go on then. Everything's going to be an Unreal Engine. There we go. That makes sense. <laughs> well, that was a great topic. Thanks for listening, folks. <laughs> um, so, shall we, before we do our next topic, um, which is going to be us talking about the Nintendo Direct presentation from Wednesday. Yeah. Yep. What Was it on Wednesday? Friday? Uh, certain try. Uh, it, it was so, last week. It was before yeah, okay. last weekend. Sure. Um, we're going to jump in, do the news. It's Quick batch. Some of the things we're going to talk about were part of the Nintendo Direct. Mm-hmm. That's just the way things go. Um, but it does mean that anything we cover during the news, which is Nintendo Direct related, mm-hmm. we won't cover as much when talking about Nintendo Direct. Yeah, because well, obviously we've already done it. Yeah. So, yeah. We will mention it, but um. We won't really particularly go into any depth with. We'll, we'll try not to bore you. Put it that way. Uh, so first up is um, this. This is Switch related, but it wasn't actually part of the Nintendo Direct, and that is um, the original Valkyria Chronicles game is coming to Nintendo Switch. Now we obviously know that uh, Valkyria Chronicles Four is coming to the Switch. Yeah. Um, and it's also coming to PS4 and the Xbox. Very PC. soon, I believe. Um, yeah, that will be the. September 25th, so this is the 18th, so this time next week. Christ, it's so close to Christmas. Just just saying, holy fuck. Yeah, um, and ah. uh, the original Valkyria Chronicles is already out for is PS4. Val- right. and say that again. Valkyria Chronicles. Is it Valkyria or Valkyria? Valkyrie, Valkyria. Valkyrie, Valkyria, but it's a Y. Valkyria. Valkyria Chronicles. Valkyria Chronicles. It doesn't, it doesn't roll off the tongue as nicely. Is that mid? I should need to roll off the tongue. <laughs> Valkyria. Valky- well, if it's Valkyria, why would we have a Y? It's Valkyria. Anyway, sorry. Any like linguistics buffs? Read this. Or, well, see us. Please tell us. It'd be amusing. Yes, please. <laughs> Jack's like, please tell me I'm right. In fact, never mind that. Sega tell us. Oh, uh, yeah. Sega make the game. <laughs> We're calling you Sega out, Sega. Won't. Tell us the truth. Sega. <laughs> Not Sega. Sega. You're going to you're, you're gonna call me out. I'm going to call you out. Let's call him Sega out, you right knob. No, no, because you said Sega. It is Se- the it's Sega. Sega. Me- the Sega Mega Drive. Sega. It rhymes. The Sega Mega Drive. Aye, really. Go on then. What, what console is it? What console did you have, sorry? The Sega Mega Drive. Say it what? Sega Mega Drive. So you're saying Sega Mega Drive before you're saying the Sega Mega Drive. Why not the Sega Mega Drive? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Wait, wait, when when it comes up in, <laughs> before a game, it goes, Sega. Because they're singing. <laughs> anyway. Fuck. Nah, man. <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Not your day, man. Anyway. <laughs> um, it, with um, th- There's a really cool thing that has been happening on the Switch store as well. 
that hasn't really happened with um, Xbox or PlayStation. Mm-hmm. And that's if you own certain games, you'll get a discount on other games. Like um, like sequels and that? Yeah. Huh, that's quite cool, well, actually. Not even just sequels, but other games by that developer. That is so cool. That is so unfair. There's a game that I bought called North. Uh-huh. And I've not played it yet. It, it apparently it only takes about an hour for a complete th- playthrough, and there's no auto save feature. It's not meant to be a big game. Oh, okay, fair enough. It's I was gonna like, to... I saw on my nose are getting a narrow playthrough. What the fuck, man? But it was eighty nine pence, right? Oh, okay, fair enough. All those types. And cool. There's other games that are a lot bigger. All right. And it on the on the, like at the bottom of the description it says get like, I think it's a pound off this game if you own blah 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 blah. blah. Um, like in like North is one of these games mm-hmm. and then like you just look at all these games that are listed and all of them like if you've got at least one of them you get money off that's not bad actually like obviously it's not gonna it's not cumulative it's not like the more games you own the more money you get off not gonna lie I thought that well, was it worked that'd be kind of the, I'd be badass because like, I think you the way it works out if that was the case you need to buy like three of the games and then every other game by that developer would be free well if you- but no, it's not good money making to make it cumulative. But but if you own one of the games, you get money off. Mm. Um, well, Sega are doing this with uh, Valkyria Chronicles. Uh, you'll get about a fiver off if you buy Valkyria Chronicles Four. Uh, sorry, uh, if you buy if you've got Valkyria Chronicles Four, even you'll get about uh. a fiver off Valkyria Chronicles Remastered. Ah, uh-huh, okay. And now that's going to be about twenty pounds, so you'll get it for about fifteen quid. No, it's not bad. It's not bad um, at all. So yeah, th- it's really cool. Um, it looks so much fun. I've I've actually played the VC four, um, demo, mm-hmm. and it it does it. It's really quite fun. Hmm. Cool. Um, it's a a, a kind of strategy RPG kind of set in a kind of war. Yeah, I've uh, I keep meaning to get the previous one. It's one of those like I keep farting off because like it looks kind of cool, but I don't know. But it looks kind of cool. And then I've heard the fourth one's like fucks the chronology almost because apparently it's like a pure demon type motherfucker, and you're like, what the fuck? Like energy blasts and shit. Um, uh, it's it's really fun. <laughs> Just double down. <laughs> it is really fun. Shut up, Mark. I've I've only really played like the first one a wee bit. Ah, okay. And the demo for four. Ah. So I can't really talk about the chronology of it. I don't, I don't know I don't know if it does mess up, but I think it'll just it'll kind of put a lot of people into a weird like funk with it. Like yeah. if you have one game and it plays one way and you're like, okay, I like this, I like this, this is nice, I like this. The next game you're like, well, well, fuck that way, let's do this one. And you're like, well, no, we like it for a lot. Come on! But it, it's it's very um, strategic mm-hmm. and it's on like a kind of grid based. And ah, fuck! I'm gonna end up getting. I can tell. It, it was, it's a lot like a uh, Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy Tactics. You're, you're making me spend my money, man. Stop. Dynasty Tactics. Oh fuck! Oh, oh uh, you're putting me off now. Dynasty Tactics. That was actually more fun than people, <laughs> people say. It, That's because you're a pure Dynasty buff, man. You actually know these characters because you study. Shh. <laughs> That's not the point. <laughs> like, oh my god, I collected this guy. What did? What, what can he? You know, what can he do? Well, he did all this. No, no, no. What weapons does he have? <laughs> anyway, we, we can let you geek out a bit now, because we're going to talk about Kingdoms, Kingdoms of Amalur. What well, you say you geek out? Like, it's a bad thing? Okay, basically, um, I'm probably one of the few people to actually sit and play this game. Um, came out, when did it come out? Do you have it up? Uh, it came 2013 ish? No. No? It came out before that. Point is, right. Oh, this game kind of plays like uh, Skyrim, but more kind of cartoony. It's really decent. Battle system was cool. Had a great lore, really in depth. You could probably get lost in it. Um, very kid friendly. Most of the monsters is more kind of Final Fantasy ish. Yeah. Some of them can even che- like, kind of chibi style. You're like, huh? Oh, oh, you're dead. <laughs> oh. Um. No, generally, it was a good game. You could get probably lost in it, taking a good 20, 30 hours off of DLC. Um, wasn't a perfect game. I don't think many games are perfect, but no, I thought it was really good. But I just got a ton of shit. I think it was partly down to when it came out as well. Yeah, I think I think I cannot remember for sure, but I think it might have been two thousand eight that came out. All right, kind of roughly, but 
I think that was roughly about the same time Skyrim originally came out. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm if I remember correctly, um, but no, the t- 2013 you're talking about is when uh, 38 Studios, the creators oh, of right. Kings of Amalur, went into liquidation. Ah, uh, okay. So, um, well, you put me in spots. So fuck you. But they, um, 38 Studios, they went in liquidation 2013, and THQ Nordic, who we spoke about, who is basically taking everything they can, and yeah, it's well, quite they awesome. Bought, they bought Koch Media, who own Deep Silver. Okay. Um, who, in turn, own Crytek. Oh, fucker. That's deep. Um, you buy one company, you get free. Uh, they own the Time Splitter series, so THQ Nordic now has Time Splitters. They said they're going to be making Time Splitters 3. It's meant to have we're getting in it. Yeah. Like, fucking hell. And it also means Saints Row is back under the THQ banner. Oh, uh-huh, right, cool. Because that was originally a THQ game. I wonder uh, if like that means you're going to get a new one, then. So, um, yeah, hmm. we might get a Saints Row 5, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. It depends if they can come up with a story for it. There was also a Kingdom of, King of Amalur um, MMO, which was never released. I don't know if it would come off as well, I'm not going to lie. Copernicus. Um, so that has also been purchased. You know, all Kingdoms of, Kingdoms of, Kingdoms of Amalur, um, all, the, all the stuff for mm-hmm. that IP has been bought by THQ Nordic. Hmm. So, hopefully... I mean, um, it could be pretty cool. Hopefully, we'll, if we don't see a new Kingdoms, Kingdoms of Amalur game, we'll probably see a remaster come out in the next year or two. Mm. At least. Um, I imagine that THQ Nordic will be... Because I don't think they're buying studios and then just disintegrating them. I no, I think we're planning yeah. something. I think we're trying something big. I think what they're doing is they're going to be funding a lot of the games that these um, companies have in their back catalogue, mm-hmm. which either need a remaster, need a sequel, or are just really super popular and just going, right, here's some money, make whatever game you want within that universe kind of thing. I mean, like I said, like, it was. I thought it was really good for what it was. It was on a few systems, and well, a few systems, not a few systems, but a few games in which you could uh, obviously swap for all different weapon types. I mean, they even had chakrams. Yeah. Can you tell me how many games have chakrams? Not many. Exactly. It was awesome. They have combos and shit, double you wielding chakrams. Like, oh. I know that Dynasty Warriors has chakrams. What don't they have? Shit, one of them has a fan. I think one of them has his bare hands as well. Like, well, fuck. Yep. Everyone else has one's got like a fucking sword and stick. What you got? My hands. <laughs> Why? But yeah, I mean, personally, I thought it was cool. If you're so if you're into cartoony fighter type shit, like kind of like Dark Siders, admittedly, but not well, as THQ on Dark Siders. Yeah, I just seen another. So I mean, it's pretty thought we're just buying up everything that was cool about my teens, and then hopefully we're gonna do something amazing with it. Hopefully. Um, we will be keeping an eye on what THQ and Nordic are doing next. Well, I mean, they've got because this is a, this is a story that's been building over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, like just because th- they're just buying up like studios that are either not doing much just now, or are have been in liquidation for a while, or are going into liquidation, mm-hmm. and they're buying up all the IPs as well. So, uh, I'm really curious to see where this goes. Mm. Uh, so we will be keeping an eye on it here at Gaming Ken, and we will be bringing it to you as we do these podcasts. Um, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get something decent at the end. I mean, hopefully, because like the last time I heard of like Dark Siders, I was like two, and that was it by itself for ages. Now we've got Dark Siders three coming, and it looks yep. amazing. Quite frankly, like fuck. So yeah, let's hope we get something really cool. Um, board game news. This is so stupid. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> Do you not? Well, I, I would like to talk about it. Side note. Apparently, Fortnite is causing most a high rate of divorces. Fun fact, I'm not married. I don't care. Well, if that attitude, you never will be. It's not going to affect me. <laughs> I'm not married. <laughs> you just, just like... Blah, 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 fuck you. Okay, tell you, I'm going to... Do you know what? Fortnite's also causing kids to go into rehab for game addiction. <laughs> which is ridiculous. No, that's, that's weak parent, man. Have yeah. you done your homework? It's nah, the parents' yeah, fault. You know, that's it's, what... it's not the game's fault. 
the game doesn't go, you must play me now. You heard about the woman in, oh shit, what was it, uh, Australia? She's um, on the wheelchair on Benefits and that. The wee kid spent 200 quid on Fortnite shit. Oh yeah, he, no, he, I heard about this. He went into her purse, got her card, put details in, spent 200 and I'm like... No, no, that's, that's not that's not a console game. That's not the game's fault. Now that's your kid knowingly spending your fucking money then thinking, I'm not going to tell her because I know I fucked up big time. Yeah, no, it's it's ridiculous. Like, everyone, like, with Fortnite being so popular, everyone's using it as a scapegoat for the fact that, like, they're not doing things right. Like, there, there's kids there who are, like, going, oh, I'm addicted to Fortnite. It's like, yes, but at the same time, your parents should have more control over you than just going, sending you to rehab for playing too much. They should be stopping you from playing if you if your playing's a problem, unless I mean, uh, unless you live in the states because there was that <laughs> kid, like, I mean, I think we spoke about it once before. There was a, a a kid who was so addicted to playing video games that when his parent, when his dad, who is a preacher for a Southern Baptist church, took away his copy of Halo. He shot him in the back of the head, shot his mother in the back of the head, played Halo for about four hours, and then phoned the police. Oh, yeah. Well, that is legitimately shocking, but... Yeah, I'm pretty sure we spoke about this before. No, Joe is even more shocking about it. I can imagine it happening in America. Yeah, this happened in Texas, believe it or not. No, I, no, I can definitely believe. Oh, my God. Right, um... Okay, we need to kind of divert it because honestly, we'll just rant about America. Um, uh, uh, oh, Vandal Free, unless you're rich and white, apparently. Fuck. But, um. <sighs> yeah, no, like, I, I know that Fortnite's getting a lot of flack for, for this, that, and the next thing, but see, nine times out of ten, it's kids that are involved and the parents are at fault for not controlling their kids. Like, you can't even just say it's just Fortnite, right? Because I've heard of one guy as well who, um, put in his car details for his son, right? As a one-off thing, it simply meant so he could buy a bit. Uh, I think he could buy a game or something online, and that was it. But he didn't take his car details off. A couple of days later, he gets a bill in for whatever. It turns out his wee kid spent unknowingly because he's a wee kid. He's fucking in the game, like forty, fifty quid on FIFA DLC. Oh yeah, and you're like at uh, the the FUT card packs. Yeah, so like in one hand you can sit there going, sucks for the guy. But you're like, well, if you're going to put your card details in... Yeah. It's, but, like, that's well, right. Um, I've got my card details on my little brother's um, PS4, right? But, obviously, one, he's 16. Two, that's, for as long as he's been in there, he's been very aware that if he ever does make a purchase, I'll know because I've got it all set up in email. Two, uh, you tell him straight up, I will know. You can't hide it. I'll find out. And when you do, you'll be dead. Simple. Well, see, like, I've got... I've got my card details set up on my Switch yeah. and on my PlayStation and my Nintendo. Do not worry if you're having it all over the place. My little brother and sister play my Switch. My mm-hmm. little brother and sister play my PlayStation. They're, what, uh, 12 and 8. Good danger phases. I think. That's harsh they, as fuck. <laughs> they know not to play on my user without me knowing. Mm-hmm. A, because if I'm getting trophies, I want to get the, trof- the trophies my bloody self. And B, so that they don't buy... Anything. Anything. Like I've got my my user pa- uh, passcode locked. Yeah. So and they don't know the passcode for it. Mm. So they can't do that. And they need to put like for the switch. They need to put it, like if they were going to buy something, they would need to know my Nintendo account e- uh, uh, password, mm-hmm. which they don't know because you need to put that in every time you make a purchase. Ah, uh, okay, that makes more sense. Like I've set it up not to be that way on my my, my uh, DS because they don't play my DS oh so you can't be fucked doing that every time no one can uh, no well I'll, I take it to work I play uh, Kawashima's brain training at work I come back here I play Pokemon in my bed or something yeah you know I don't you know it's not a big deal really to be fair because uh, they don't play my my DS they mm-hmm. play my Switch they play my Playstation so having it having those safeguards there is is fine for those consoles but I don't need it on my DS but that's what parents need to start doing like um, my friend they, they, their three year old daughter likes to play video games on like like just like kind of like kind of daft wee games things like uh, Peggle 
and Peggle. Uh, Peggle, yes. Peggle. It's a really, really fun game. Apparently, I've never played it. I don't know much about it. Wow! Thanks for that info dump. Um, <laughs> and uh, gaming historian uh, knows fuck all. Katamari Damacy. Oh, uh, is that that thing we just? Yeah, okay, that's just trippy. Um, I don't know. Is that the story to it? Fucking hell! But um, they let them play on their account, and they bought. You know, they they bought all the DLC for Peggle, which is fine because there's about five bits and they're a pound each, right? Okay. So they were like, ah, do you want? It's fine because it's not like it was 40 odd quid, it was a five. Yeah. But ever since, just in case they have made them another account, like because they like playing Fortnite a wee bit as well, the three year old. Ooh. They do have, like, it does have like the kind of PS Plus subscription and stuff. Mm hmm. Um, to play online, but like, a uh, voice chat for the games turned off anyway. Oh God, I um, Christ! So yeah, it's it, you know they know to set up a separate account, not have card details on that account, and things like that. So mm-hmm. yeah, um, more parents need to know about this. Like, uh, the ESRB you're doing things about things like this because of the whole loot box scenario with um battlefront mm-hmm. which is now a long and distant memory yeah thank god um but esrb are taking proactive steps to helping parents in the states and i think we need like peggy to do something like that over here i think in all is just stricter parent in most cases yeah but I mean, you can't just blindly say oh no it's a game's fault lane to reimburse me yeah but the thing is, like, because par- most parents don't know. Well, that's down to them as well. Yeah. If you have kids, right, but you should... I'm, well, okay. Like I was saying, like, ESRB in the States, they're, they're working with parents to educate them. Yeah. Whether or not the parents want to be educated or whether or not they know this is a thing that they're doing mm-hmm. is six and a half a dozen to the fact. But at least ESRB are going, you know, we are here to give you support. Mm-hmm and help you know what you need to do it's up to the parents now to go right we don't know what any of this is um so why don't we educate ourselves instead of just blaming the game you know it needs to be more it needs to be more advertised over there and we need something like that over here Mm -hmm. but the fact is the services to help are there it's just no one seems to know about them yeah well to be honest I don't. I don't imagine most. Better. <laughs> if you grow up a gamer, then you know this shit. Yeah. It's just a standard fare. You're aware of it, so you can work around it. Like you said, um, um, people are talking about. They know very well what to do, what not to do. Don't set up an open account for your kids to fuck about with. Easy way to lose so much money. Yeah. However, if you're not a gamer, and you just do your own shit, and you just let your kids like fuck about, then. You're not going to want to know what we're doing as long as it doesn't cost you anything. Yep. But if you don't know what we're doing, you can't verify that what we're doing isn't costing you anything. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I don't know, it's weird. Because obviously I don't imagine many parents being like, yes, teach me about your video game life, son, daughter. No, nah, um, not very many parents are interested, but they should be. Like, I think, unfortunately, it's going to end up happening. They're just going to be like, you want? you're not going to get a console. Fuck off that side. Uh, yeah. No, I think we're getting to the point, like, with kids, like, just kind of taking the mickey a wee bit, to be fair. Whether they know they're doing it or not is six and a half thousand, but we're going to see, we, but I don't I don't know if we will or not, but there's a chance we will see a decline of video game sales if they do include in-game purchases. Purely just because people are just going to see that and think instantly, ah, that's my money going away. Yeah, exactly. Um, and to be fair, um. I wouldn't mind if in-game purchases disappeared. You know, I'm strictly of the the feeling that back in the days of the Ninten- like the original Nintendo systems and the the original Xbox and uh, like up to the PS2. You know, when you buy a game, that should be all you need to pay for, mm-hmm. just the game. Maybe a couple of extra peripherals here and there. You know, like maybe. Uh, if you're playing like a flight simulator, getting the the joystick, or if you're playing a racing game, you know the wheel and pedals and yeah. things. But you shouldn't be needing to buy, you know, in-game currency. 
hate that. Like, fucking don't give me I love in-game currency in the way of earning yourself currency. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Um, Buying like one million units or whatever for yeah, like but, forty quid. Like, but what, no. When, but the thing is, like, with in-game currencies, most games have two now: your grind currency and your premium currency. And then there's things that are locked behind the premium currency. And I'm like, what's the point in that? One sec. No, oh, yeah. Yeah, but with um, pre- things being locked behind, yeah, it happens because I, I I didn't pause the recording. Ah, oh, okay, cool. I I, I kind of stopped the recording. That's ah, uh, oh, okay, cool. That's what's happening there. All um, right, well, you have to just call us off, obviously. No, no, it's fine. I'll uh, continue. Yeah, we had to pause the the recording there, and I accidentally stopped, and Mark was pointing out it came up as a separate track there on our recording software. Um, but no, um. Premium currency, like, don't get me wrong, like, some of the things that are locked behind premium currency are really cool, and some some of the things are really worth it. Like... Is it low? I mean... I, it depends, like... Because you get some of the things, it's kind of like seasonal items, which are special, because they weren't planning on... Releasing. Oh, wait, is this, like, MMO type stuff? No, not even that, like, uh... Yeah, give me an example, I need an example, so I can uh, get what you Attack on mean. Titan. Right. game. It, it, it's not locked behind premium currency, but it is um, DLC. Mm-hmm. You've got, like, the Christmas outfits. See, that's what I absolutely hate about, like, JRPGs and that. They rely so heavily on alternative outfits. Yeah. And it's not like even... They don't cost a lot. You think they don't, because, like, oh, look, this is only, like, three quid. That's fine. But then there's, um, all the 20 other outfits are three quid, and you're like, yeah. nah. Nah, man. Which is why, obviously, I remember telling you about Persona. Yeah, eighty quid's content or twenty. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. No, um, they're not. You get like things that are locked behind real money mm-hmm. purchases or premium currency, depending on the style of game you play. Yeah, some of it can be worth it, some of it's not. Most of it's not, but you get the occasional thing that is. Um, well, I mean, it does vary. For instance, like with the, uh, the ones that I like are where it is purely aesthetic. There's no um, bonus to having it. Like, there's no advantage. Like, I play. I used to play FF14 a lot. I've not played it in forever, but I really, really want to go back to playing it. Um, but I've I bought a few outfits and stuff on the Mog Station, which is like kind of uh the hub for buying optional items. Mm-hmm. So I bought like um, Cloud Strife's outfit from Final Fantasy Crisis Core. I got Zidane from Final Fantasy Nines. I got um, uh, Lightnings from FF13. Nice. Um, Squalls from FF8. Also nice. Uh, you know, I've got things like that. And I've got like some really super cool weapons um, that are lo- locked behind that. You, but like, obviously, with it being an MMO and stuff, there, there, there are certain requirements to being able to use them. Like, you have to be a certain class. But with the DLC stuff, it's like the weapons, you have to be a certain class. But it's only like level 13, so it's somewhere you can get to within like 10 minutes of playing that class. Okay. And they are slightly stronger than other level 13 weapons, but... Quickly, you outrank them. Yeah. And most people just use them for... Um, Aesthetics. Yeah, they'll, they'll glam it, which um, is where you use glamour stones to make other weapons look like that. So you get your high level one, just like, yeah. and tweak, I've got a buster sword, bring it. Yeah, pretty much. Um, for, I mean, I think the more common phrase, instead of glamming it, is um, tran- transmog it, which is transmogrification from Diablo and World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's the same thing, essentially. Glamour uses me more. Hmm? <laughs> Glamour uses me more. Uh, yeah, but you just cast glamour. Um, so, you know, these things are really cool because it does give you more option, like, with it being an MMO, mm-hmm. um, in Final Fantasy XIV's, um, exa- in the Final Fantasy fourteen example, it does give you more um, options for customization within an MMO where there's a couple of other million players in, like, the same world as you. So, um, it does make it that way. You know, it does make it kind of worth it mm-hmm. in a kind of personal sense. Like, I, my character doesn't look like anyone else's. Yay! Except everyone else has seen that for the exact same thing. Yeah. But some of them are locked behind rewards as well. So, like, if you have a subscription for X amount of time, you'll get 
like loyalty bonuses and stuff mm-hmm. in that game uh, and you'll get like outfits and weapons and uh ticket like i think they're called etheric tickets which means you can teleport around the map for free huh. like it costs you like grind currency to do so but it, it costs you like a hundred all right and most people by the time they're needing to use it regularly have a couple of hundred mil so, oh, so it's just like fuck it. So yeah, it's like I'm, like if I on, if it was payday for me, just going right, everything is a penny. Sound. And I've got like two hundred pounds like in the bank, but everything's going to be a penny for the day, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I could sit and do it forever. I mean, it's like and obviously certain content. I get like if it's loyalty currency, loyalty currency, loyalty bonuses, completely down with flat. That makes sense to me. Aesthetic things, I will get where yours coming from. For me, I think it's too heavily relied on. Yeah. The only ones I'd really go for are true game expansions. The best example I've got is Witcher. Yeah, it's a example that both of us often bring up when we talk about DLC. Purely because, obviously, if you add that into a main game, it wouldn't make as much sense. So it makes more sense to have it as ex- um, expansion, literal expansions of Geralt's story. Yeah. So it doesn't take away from the main one, it adds to it, it just adds to the whole mythos. Um, so I mean, it is more interesting for me, because obviously it just it gives more life to it, it gives more yeah. depth. Whereas, it also fills up uh, gaps in the story, or ties up loose ends. Mm-hmm. Like, don't get me wrong, DLC doesn't have to do that, but it's really cool when it does. It's yeah. really well used when it's used like that. So, I mean, obviously I completely get behind spending money on certain expansions, because of the Witcher is one thing, but then if you get... Oh, there was, was that Tomb Raider one we were talking about where it was, I think it was uh, a tenner, and it was like, a ten minute level. Yeah, fuck that. And the worst one I've heard of is Azura's Wrath. Yes. But you have to actually pay... Chapter to, 13. Yeah, and you're like, okay, so I bought the game, I get to play it. Oh wait, the ending's ambiguous, that's not really fair. Oh, I can spend like twenty quid and get the true ending. Yeah, which Zip gives up. you like three three chapters or three episodes, and yeah. Um, another um DLC thing that I found was really really cool. Um, I haven't played it myself personally. I've played the base game. Mm-hmm. It was that was Final Fantasy fifteen. Now there's two two bits of DLC. Well, one chunk of various bits of DLC and one standalone bit of dlc the standalone bit is the royal edition which is great because it f- it fills out the story and fills out all the gaps mm-hmm. from the base game that was meant that were meant to be in the base game at release but because of all the issues they had with making it in the first place the fact it was only meant to be a two-year dev cycle and it ended up being 10 yeah you know they did kind of start rushing it out at the end so that's kind of everything that they intended to be in it but then you've also got the episodes mm-hmm. episode gladio episode prompto uh episode ignis and they've got, you've got more episodes coming. You've got Luna Freya, Aranea, Noctis, Kor. All right. All the other characters, they're getting episodes as well. Some of them are smaller, some of them are bigger. Uh, but generally, you're getting more episodes. And it's side stories. So, like, what what happens in the gap between when uh, Noctis disappears um, after the battle with Arden? All right. And then when he reappears on the island and comes back to Hammerhead and meets everyone, I think like twenty years later. Oof. Um. So like in this gap, what happens? And you know, it's like Gladio is away training and they fight Gilgamesh and Prompto learns Oof. more about himself and Ignis learns to deal with his blindness and still be able to fight, kind of thing. Mm. So it gives you, it fills up these gaps that aren't really explained because this is like kind of end game time. So there's not really much time for storytelling. Just this saying, is... we should have probably gave a spoiler warning. Yes, a little bit late. Um, I well, this is this is DLC that's been out for a couple of years, so I'm assuming people have played it. Nope. So yeah, thanks for the spoilers, bruh. <laughs> awesome. I'll let you get. I'll let you spoil something that I want to know about. No, because I'm not a horrible person. <laughs> I got totally in the rhythm. Okay, I totally no, forgot about it. Um, also, like we're so far off topic right now. Um, anyway, um, but yeah, no, it was really cool. Like how they've managed to tie up some loose ends and stuff because that's kind of 
when that would normally be explained as kind of the end game when you're wrapping up to fight the final boss mm-hmm. kind of thing. So there's not much time for storytelling there. Yeah. So uh, it's really cool how they've used the episode format to add in all this extra content. Mm-hmm. And like the season pass is like fifteen pound and these are all like That's not bad actually. Five pound episodes. Yeah. But the the season pass also includes comrades, which is a multiplayer mode. Hmm. Uh, and it includes all content except from the Royal expand the, the Royal Pass, which is just downloading all the extra stuff for Royal Edition. If you don't already have the Royal Edition. Oh, cool. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, to quickly kind of just sum up what we basically just said, uh, DLC is good when it actually adds to the gameplay and adds to the mythos, etc., or just your own very unique experience. Yeah. However, majority of it tends to just be a cash grab. And we got onto that because of Fortnite and all the mad random stories about Fortnite. And we got onto Fortnite because we didn't actually explain anything about the, the next news story. No. Fortnite is getting a Monopoly game. That's that's how all this started. We read that on the screen and then we went off on that mad random tangent. Right, I'll let you talk about Fortnite because I, uh, I, I, you know, I I'm done with that story already. Like All I was going to say is Monopoly's getting a, uh, Monopoly's getting a Fortnite version. It comes out on October 1st. The creative director is honestly called Donald Mustard. Donald Mustard. See, for some reason I was singing the Cluedo. Like, uh, General Mustard. Mm. And, uh, so, like, you can see Board Game and Mustard. Because like, when I read the bottom line, like, Fortnite Monopoly will be in stores on October 1st, according to Mustard's tweet. And I'm just like, or did Cluedo, like, uh, Twitter he's the, now? He's, <laughs> he's the worldwide creative director for Epic Games. <laughs> That's awesome. Dude, spicy. Um, but yeah, it's uh, <laughs> Fortnite is getting a Monopoly, a version of Monopoly to play. Uh, that's out in about two weeks' time. Who knows? We might buy it and play it. Well, Probably you might. not. Uh, wait, how does a shoot 'em up transfer to Monopoly? Please explain quickly. <sighs> right. Mm-hmm. So, your areas. So your properties mm-hmm. are going to be places like Paradise, Palms, Dusty Divot, Lazy Links, Tilted Towers, blah, 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 blah. The locations on the map of the game, past, present. Um, your feature, your you know, your, like your uh, community chest and chance cards are going mm-hmm. to be, I think, traps and storm cards. Okay. No, feature chests and storm cards. You've also got traps. Don't know how they work. Um, I think that's probably jail. Um, okay. And instead of having like the boat, the dog, the iron, the tin hat, the the top hat, you've got like the skull trooper, nevermore, and omega, which are popular skins in the game. Okay. So it's just going to be everything's Fortnite themed. It's going to be a regular game of Monopoly. Oh. Okay. But everything's going to be replaced with Fortnite things. Huh. Random as fuck. That's one place I didn't see them jumping into, of all things. No. Like, did you know what no, we'd really I need? Of, I kind of seen it. Oh, fuck you. Right, get to the next story. I mean, like, we've got McDonald's Monopoly. Right, okay, right. The thing about McDonald's is... Fast food. Yeah, like a massive enterprise. They're trying to own everything. True. Um, so, no, I think logical. That makes sense. Fortnite, Lord I don't of the Rings. Get- Harry Potter. Well, if you play Star Trek, if you play it from the perspective of Sauron and Voldemort, ah, uh, trying to all real shit. Star Trek, Celtic and Rangers. It's not actually, is there? Yep. Oh, I don't know. That's a bit. Dis- that's a bit divisive. Ooh. Also, only in Scotland. A shocker! Oh. I wouldn't have any relevance anywhere uh, else. Pez, on launch day, is releasing. Celtic and Rangers editions. That's going to cost so much shit. Oh, yes. Because you're going to get fans going in and going, yeah, you're going to get copies. What, what, what copies are you in? Rangers. Oh, you're getting... Do you know what edition I'm getting? None. The standard <laughs> edition that doesn't have either. <laughs> Safety first. I'm going, to Amer- I'm, I'm going to Spain and buying the Barcelona edition. Or you can just import it, but okay, you have, you get travel. You travel, you know. Gives me an excuse to go to Scotland for a while. Fuck's sake, man. I've never been out of Scotland. Seriously? I've been to England. I've never <laughs> been off the island. Never been off the island. Oh, fuck's sake, Anyway, the, we were talking about VR earlier. This is a kind of VR experience that I'm looking forward to. It's just like a, a short video. It's like a 10-minute interactive video. 
uh, in VR. It's Which free. is free. Uh, it comes out just before Christmas, and especially with the game that's based on having been delayed till just after Christmas, mm-hmm. it's going to keep us um, going to keep us occupied with some related stuff until the game obviously releases. I'm, I'm quite clearly doing my best not to mention what game it is yet. Yeah, because I don't even know why. You know, I really don't know why. It just sounds really random. I'm just trying to build suspense for what game it is, I suppose. But it's Kingdom Hearts. <gasps> really? Um, it's going to feature music from the game. Um, and as you keep playing, the more co- more content will unlock. So, like, it's like uh, I've got the Pokemon Sun and Moon demo and Pokemon Auras demos. Mm-hmm. And I, as you replay it every time, you unlock more things to take to the original, the, the, like the actual games. Mm-hmm. This is kind of similar, but not quite. You don't unlock things in KH3 or in any other Kingdom Hearts games. You just get more things to do in Kingdom Hearts VR, mm-hmm. which is really, really cool. Um, especially considering this is free. It's coming out just before Christmas. Um, I'm I'm kind of quite looking forward to this and seeing what it is. Um, mm-hmm. You enjoy that then. I'm not. It's a, it's a video. 10 minute video. I'll I'll uh, let you have a shot. You can you can so you can make up a legitimate decision. Oh, a legit. Oh, right next. Right next. Um, like I said, we were going to be talking about um the Nintendo Direct, but there was one big bit of news from the Nintendo Direct that I wanted to cover, mm-hmm. and I wanted to cover it in the news so it was separate, so it didn't get muddled in, and also so we can isolate it and talk about it a bit more in depth okay and that is uh square enix's kind of homecoming to nintendo mm-hmm. like because like this is what i've been like i think i kind of called this a couple of weeks ago yeah probably um i definitely called uh Final fantasy 15 coming out on switch makes sense um i what i said was i'm not happy about the fact that it's probably going to be pocket edition because the switch itself probably couldn't handle a full-on proper Final Fantasy 15 Royal Edition mm-hmm. um, without being docked. Oh, but, yeah. And people will still want to play it on the go. Mm-hmm. So it'll probably be the Pocket Edition we get, and that's what we got. And I did say that um, Octopath Traveler was uh, Square Enix's homecoming to being a developer for um, Nintendo. And we're going to see some of the Final Fantasy games kind of start coming back to Nintendo. And this is this is what's happening. Mm-hmm. Um, Final Fantasy 15 released three, four days ago, the Pocket Edition. We're now getting Crystal Chronicles, which is getting remastered for the N- Nintendo Switch. And it has also been announced that it's coming to PS4 and Xbox One. Oft. Coming out everywhere, man. So once, this, um, once the Nintendo Directs was done... Uh, all the Final Fantasy stuff, like anything that wasn't already on PS4, so like Zodiac Age, uh, Final Fantasy Twelve, Zodiac Age, Final Fantasy Seven, Final Fantasy Nine, and Ten Ten Two Remastered, were all announced as well. There was a couple of other ones which we'll get to in a minute. Mm-hmm. They were all announced um, as coming out for the Switch. After that, these are these are ones that are already on PS4. But Microsoft then re- released a statement saying that these games are also coming to the Xbox One. Yeah. Um, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles was a GameCube game which was fantastic. Um, it was couch co-op. It was great fun. Uh, it's been so long since I played it, I can hardly remember it. But it was so good. Like I've got the the memories of the emotions I felt while playing it. I just don't have any of the memories of the actual story because I just spent too much time enjoying it. <laughs> good lord, man. Um, but no. Um, it, it was so much fun. Um, it's basically coming from a heavy, heavy Final Fantasy buff. Very much looking forward to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I can't wait for this to come out. Like, cause, um, I was reading a review of the Nintendo Direct after I watched it to see if there was any things that I'd missed that I didn't pick up on. Mm-hmm. And one was from uh, US Gamer the website and it, the, just the title of the article pretty much summed it up 
the Nintendo Switch has become a Final Fantasy machine. Yeah, it's going to do it really interestingly. I mean, if you can take basically any game on the go, yeah. game changer. Um, but I'm bum. So, yeah, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. We're also getting another um, portable game from the Final Fantasy series, which was uh, Final Fantasy Chocobo's Mystery Dungeon. And it's it's a, a remastered version where you can play as every AI character as well. Like, every AI companion. Huh. You can also control all of them as well. So it's kind of different. Once you've them and got yeah. them on your team, obviously, you can't just turn on the game and go, right, I'm going to have everyone. Uh, <laughs> bet you, bet you, so bet they've, you. Um, so they've gave it the tagline, everybody. All of that is all you. Uh, oh. Yeah, it looks so good. And it basically plays like the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games. Yeah, I remember them, yeah. Um, so anyone who's played that will be already familiar with the, the game style. And it just looks so good. I've played the Mystery Dungeon games and they were great fun. So this will be, again, great fun because Pokemon and uh, Final Fantasy are two, two franchises I've just loved since I first, first played them. Mainly because they're about as old as us. Pretty much, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to Crystal Chronicles. I, I have such fond memories of playing it on the GameCube. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can't wait to dive back into that story. Um, it's going to be great. It's gonna be a great day, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, as well as Crystal Chronicles, I'm gonna skip one of these stories because I've got more underneath, or a few of these stories. Um, Final Fantasy Seven, Eight, Seven, Nine, Ten are also coming. Ten is the Ten Ten Two Remaster. Um, they're they're coming next year at some point, as is Crystal Chronicles. Mm-hmm. Um, the Final Fantasy Twelve, I think, is coming in December, if I remember rightly. Or Not was sure. that or was that Mystery Dungeon that's December? One of those two is yeah. December. I mean the thing about these ones as well, obviously it's great they're coming to <coughs> Pardon. Uh coming to the Switch. It is main you should obviously be aware it's like not like a pure updated remaster type thing. It's literally it is a classic game. They they have been recoded slightly. All right. Uh, so that they will, so that they're optimized for newer systems. They will have slightly better graphics. Um, well, uh, Final Fantasy Twelve: The Zodiac Age, mm-hmm. uh, Final Fantasy Ten Ten Two Remaster, and Final Fantasy Fifteen Pocket Edition. They're all recent games. Yeah. You know, because well, Twelve uh, and Ten Two. Zodiac Age is about a year old. Is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's the it's the remaster of it. Ah, I get you. Ten Ten Two Remaster released. Um, I think it was two months after PS Four launched. It was right. also on the PS Three as well. So you know, it's still a pretty recent game compared to other ones in there. Yeah, but the original game launched like two thousand one. Final Fantasy Twelve, the first, the, the original version was that was like two thousand and nine. And basically, flew under the radar. I would argue. Yeah, it did. Uh, it was it's a fantastic game as well. I've mm. I've I've been playing it. Um, not as much lately, but uh, you only play so much, and you play fucking everything. I know. Like Jesus, right now I'm playing Spider Man and F1 2018. See, most people take a game at a time. You're playing like five, six different games all at once. I have, uh, yeah. I, see, if I could, I would just grow two new arms and two new sets of eyes. Two, what? An- another pair of eyes. I have one pair of eyes for playing, <laughs> pair of eyes for playing my Switch. The other ones for playing my PlayStation. Good lord. <laughs> Pretty sure you'd need another brain. Nah. nah. Oof. Enjoy your headaches. When it comes to gaming, I'm I'm pretty sure my ga- my brain can handle playing multiple systems at once. <sighs> That's probably all about all it could handle. <laughs> Any thinking of anything else, my brain will just melt. But um, gaming, I could probably do it. Now, it, it should be noted, and as you've quite clearly noticed, we've not said Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. Now... There's no one knows why, but I have a theory. Is it the same as what I said? Perhaps. Um, I did hear rumors that there was going to be a Final Fantasy VIII HD remaster. Ooh. I I and I I heard rumors that that was going to be out in twenty twenty. See, logically, because it was going to be the first project that they do after Kingdom Hearts three. Uh-huh. So I don't know how true this is. Again, this is just rumors. Um, but that's what I'd heard. So I'm imagining that they're not going to do Final Fantasy VIII until the HD remaster comes out. Uh, so we, 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 we'll see. Uh, or if it's just something to do with like issues of licensing of some kind. I mean, 
like if you look at graphics between like seven, eight, and nine, eight stands out because it is like heavily yeah. really realistic. It's yeah. like they put tons, like, tons and tons of money into it, and they're like, okay, no, 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 the other two are only kind of cartoony. I I really like the graphics for it. Uh, they they were just like just the, the leap in graphics from seven to eight. Yeah, it kind of is a bit jarring when you're if, if you think about it. You're like, yeah. okay, little pixel did awesome. But you look at what. But then you've also got to think of the graphical style as well because uh, look at 8 and 9. Like 8 is trying to go for the kind of uh, realistic modern day setting. Mm. Maybe even slightly futuristic. Yeah, depending on the stories you listen about it, it's very... Yeah. When you look at 9, that's going back to the storybook roots of the art Literally. genre. Yeah. Uh, as uh, as has uh, Octopath Traveler. I'd still argue 9 was probably um, just fun to play because it is just so... It's reminiscent, that's what the yeah. does. And I think, like, depending on how, like, because, I mean, Final Fantasy VII is meant to be a bit more urban and nitty-gritty. Yeah. And the way they've done the graphics for each of them, of not just, like, the graphical style, but the actual way the game looks, the uh, whether it's nine with its quite well-polished cartoony graphics. Yeah, big heads. Final Fantasy VIII with its uh, slightly more realistic aimed Definitely. graphics, or seven with its kind of anime style graphic, like anime style designs. Huh. I never thought of it like that. That makes sense, actually. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, it is a, like kind of more low quality than like eight and nine, but that was because while the hardware was there, the software to make the graphics as polished as the other games wasn't, also. Final Fantasy VII was a buggy mess. Like, see if you didn't play the game the way that most of us did play it. Mm -hmm. Like, there's material combinations that should not work, but they do. And you can just do insane amounts of damage. You can actually physically break the game. They Probably best once not they, to. Once they finished making the game, um, one of the guy, one of the head guys at, like for that division at Square Enix went, right, okay, now we've finished making the game, let me just go clean up the code a bit, and then we'll release it. They were like, no, no, this code is like Jenga. You mess around with it and it will not work. Well, um, to be fair, regardless, it's still setting out one of the most iconic games yeah, ever. I, it's, it's a very weird game to talk about because it's so iconic. It's such a fantastic game. But I feel like it's overrated and... Like, when you start diving into the game, like, the code and how the game's built, it is just so weird. It's not normal. Um, I mean, I do feel like it is a bit overblown. I mean, for instance, I was, lo I was watching this video from Old Culture, uh, and I was like, the top top 20 gaming villains? Yeah. Guess who's number one? Sephiroth. Yeah. And you're like, the fuck? All gaming villains, like, for, for past, like, I would 20 years since Sephiroth. I would totally, totally went for Lubu. Eh? Uh, Lubu's from uh, Samurai Warriors. No, Dynasty oh, Warriors, even. Man. No, um. You sit down. If you said a roach, you would have got that one. Um, no, I would have actually went for, um. Ozma from Final Fantasy IX. Huh. Then I'd go for Ozma it. was super cool. No idea who to go for, in all honesty. Um, but yeah, that that that's my theory. Of why there's no eight is because there's they're gonna do a HD remaster, but there's no specific release date for any games except from twelve, which is ne which is uh, November, November. Yeah, I think it's because obviously twentieth. Yeah, I think so. I remember that's today. I cannot remember which game it is. I think it's purely just because that is the most up to date one as is. Yeah, and uh, Final Fantasy Pocket Edition, which again, as we said, released about three four days ago. Yeah, at the time of recording. Yeah, it's um, just 7, 9, 10, apparently it's just next year. Next year as well as... I only see next year, so I was like, yeah, oh, next some year. Point 20, 20, some point in 2019, but I do imagine we'll start getting Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8... So on, so on, so on. And the 13 trilogy. Hmm. Um, I think we'll end up with all the mainline games on the Switch at some point. Maybe. But I don't think... Well, I say that. I don't think we'll end up with 11 or 14. Because they're MMOs. Yeah. So, 
with the exception of the two MMOs, I think we'll end up with all the mainline games on the, the system. We'll probably end up getting a few of the games like Tactics. That was good. Um, Crystal Defenders we might get. Never played it. It's like a terror defense style game. Ah, right. Made by Square Enix, set in the Final Fantasy universe. There's no story. It's just, you know, terror defense. How far can you How far go before you lose all your life? How far um, can you go? But yeah, I think we'll get a lot more of these games coming into it. As well, I think um, there, are, there were a couple of side games which um, when Final Fantasy VIII released on the PS2, PS1 even, uh, you could, how do we prefer, you could put in a second memory card slot mm-hmm. and you play, it was like a kind of Tamagotchi but with chocobos and Moombas Fuck, and you would just go exploring and find things and you could carry items over into that game and it was also a way to power up it said uh, GFs because there were GFs as well, the chocobo and the Moomba. So uh, right, it was cool. also a way to power them up. So I think it's about, I think another reason is to incorporate that back into the game because the Switch, not the Switch, the Steam version has it, but you just actually just physically play it using the the arrow keys. Mm-hmm. So um, it might be to do with getting that to carry over. We, we shall see. Yeah. But I think, it would be really cool if they do bring back Final Fantasy, if they do bring Final Fantasy VIII to it, mm-hmm. they create a multiplayer mode just for Triple Triad. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, basically the point of that was Final Fantasy is back on the Nintendo and we're, we've started with Final Fantasy Pocket Edition, uh, Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition, which I uh, showed Mark earlier, I've been playing a wee bit, a fair bit of it. It's mm-hmm. really fun. It's a lot simplified. Kind of um, looks more. I think I'd probably end up playing that more than the other one. See, because I was having this discussion with, with Harry yeah yesterday no, mm-hmm. on Sunday that Final Fantasy Fifteen is a very weird game for me. Um, it's not what I expect from a Square Enix RPG. It's fun. Yeah. It's graphically amazing. It has a good story. The combat feels really intuitive when you're playing and and all of that but when i play a square enix rpg there's two things unless it's the, unless it's an mmo there's pretty much two things that there needs to be and you don't need anything else mm-hmm. main story yeah a bl- bloody good one and plenty of places to explore yeah and you've got both of them but it's all the side quests go here go there again. The problem with with that, right, is I see that as kind of more of a Western thing with things like um, Bethesda games mm-hmm. and Bioware with like Dragon Age and Mass Effect, uh, Skyrim and um, well, Elder Scrolls and Fallout is there's a main story there and you can go at it at your own pace. There's a sense of urgency to do it. Well, with the Bioware games, at least, yeah, not so much with Bethesda, but there is like there is a clear main story there. Mm-hmm. Whether you decide or not to do it, like right there and then, is up to you. I mean, I said put me off fifteen a bit. There's yeah. just no feeling of right. You got to get this done. Go go go. It's more yeah. of a. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun. But the thing is, like, as you're playing, as you get through the cutscenes for the main story, there is that sense of ur- sense of urgency during the cutscenes. Yeah. But then once you've got free reign again, it's just like, um, do you know what? I'm not going to do the main story just now. I'm going to go over there to the opposite side of the map and see if I can find one of the royal arms. Or just simply, I want to make more recipes. Hmm, what else do I need? Ooh, where do you think this? Yeah, yeah. Um, Which would just random side shit you don't really definitely, need to do. Um, it it doesn't feel quite like a like I don't really like using the term JRPG despite the f- how often I use it, mm. um because a JRPG is any role playing game that originates from Japan. Yeah, well but the classic you can say that, but it feels like it's got a very unique style to it. But when but when I say JRPG, I think the same what everybody else thinks about JRPG things like every Final Fantasy up to Final Fantasy up to and including even Final Fantasy Ten. With the turn-based battle systems and the menu-based combat, mm-hmm. and the the clear good triumph triumphing o- tri- triumphing over evil main quest, 
which is pretty much all you need to do. You can do a wee bit of exploring for super powerful items. So basically it's kind of like Persona would be the nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I understand why they moved away from it. Like, with Skyrim, well, Elder Scrolls and Fallout and Mass Effect and, like, your Western RPGs being more popular. Mm-hmm. And it's, they went that way because that's where more gamers are going rather than your turn based because gamers now they're the especially the younger generation of gamers that are coming up just now they're they don't have the patience for a turn-based rpg yeah you know it's it's shooters and action rpgs and you know that's fine i still would like to see more jrpgs of the classic fashion um despite the fact it's such a, a great game it's just see if someone else had made final fantasy 15 and it came out exactly the same like you, you just change Square Enix to Bethesda on this, on, like as it loads up. Yeah, it wouldn't bother me. It's just because it doesn't feel like a Square Enix style RPG. It's really, it's not. The only similarity is the character design. I'd argue. Yeah. Um. And the name said. Yeah. Christ. <laughs> There's a Sid in virtually every game. Um. Was Jackson there an explanation of that again? No. There's just... also a Big and Wedge in most of the games as well. I only remember nine. Um, seven yeah. was Avalanche. They were Avalanche characters. All right. Uh, ten, they were in the. They were guards in Lucas Stadium, and you can actually recruit both of them on your Blitzball team. <laughs> uh, eight, they were Galbadian soldiers. They were actually the first ones you properly fight at the top of the Dahlia communications tower. All right. And then you see them various other times through the game. Oh yeah, they're they're all over the place, and they were actually named after uh, Big Star Clayter and White Antilles from the Star Wars Star Wars franchise. Huh. There Just you go. bastards. There we go. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to all the Final Fantasy games we're getting coming out on Switch. Um, I actually recently bought a 512 gigabyte um, SD card for my Switch. Mm-hmm. So that's going to be full of uh, Pokemon and Final Fantasy games shortly. Good lord. Because <laughs> with Pokemon Let's Go and the main series Pokemon Switch yeah. coming out, I'll end up buying all of them. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to buy Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. I'll one or the other. Probably Eevee. Yeah, I'll go for Eevee. Would um, Maybe? I don't know I yet. don't know. I haven't decided yet. I don't have a Switch yet, so I'm quite happy to just... Oh, are you going to get one? I don't know, mate. Well, obviously, you know, job. Joys. Yeah. Anyway, right, continue on, because I do have a, not a time limit as such, but... It is a 20 past 11. Yeah, I so don't want to be here at, like, 1. No, I, I would quite like to get to my bed before 1 o'clock. Yeah, so let's... Because I'm working in the morning. Yeah, okay, let's oh, rattle. No, I'm working at 2, so I actually have the time. Um, I don't. Let's rattle. We've got a... Right, so anytime we've spoke about this next developer, next story, um, we always have a wee bit of a, a running joke because I can never figure out what it is. Yeah. Sci games, Kai games, CY games. Um, Sci games. Go Sci, sci right. games. Um, you know, the, the, these are the guys that are known for making Grand Blue Fantasy, which we've spoke about a few times. It mm-hmm. looks good. Yeah. Uh, we're quite excited to um, play the English translation because I think it comes out next month. Oh, nice. I can't remember. Um, it may already be out, and I've just totally forgotten about, about it because I'm expecting it to be out later. Uh, I can't remember. But it's embarrassing if it's out already. We have no idea about it. Uh, they've announced its first console exclusive game um, ahead of the this year's Tokyo Game Show. Mm-hmm. And it's called Project Awakening. Uh, it's going to be in Japan and the US, so we might get it over here on the e-store, like the the PlayStation Store, but we probably won't get physical copies. Um, we don't know. Uh, but uh, it's going to be like dragons and uh, RPG and fighting them with swords and yeah, it just looked good. Good RPG fair. Um, well, or not to stand out, we have no idea. There's um, a wee small selection of screenshots available on the Polygon website, which is where I actually picked up this story. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the We'll get more uh, news about it over time. There's no release date yet, so uh, but it does look like it 
could be late next year, could be late 2019 it's coming out, which for RPG fans is a bit of a problem, because that's when Final Fantasy VII R is meant to be being released. Meant to be. Meant to be. So... But again, if we should play different enough, then... Yeah, oh, like, well, mm. FF7R is going to be an action RPG. Yeah, it depends on how well it goes, though. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, so yeah, we'll update you more as we get information. Yep. Uh, from Software, have a VR title coming. Um, I'm not going to try and re- pronounce this. The Racine. Okay. Um, I, that's finally got a release date. It's going to be about £30. Mm-hmm. Um, it's from, obviously, from Software, the guys that make Dark Souls and Bloodborne. Uh, alongside Sony Inter- Interactive and Ta- Interactive Entertainment's uh, Japan studio, um, uh, they released a trailer which looked fantastic. Um, so the producer uh, Masaki Yamigawa uh, wrote on the PlayStation PlayStation blog describing it as a classic adventure game brought to life by VR Tech. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's fanta- it just looks fantastic. So you play as a fairy who is in an old boarding school with six boys and girls and their aging headmaster. Um, and you, the fairy is basically described as someone who can give and take the time one has to live. It sounds pretty ominous. It's kind of meant to be a kind of horrorish adventure by the looks of it. Sounds very heavily japanese orientated kind of. So if, like, if you've seen like somewhere like uh just put it like urban horror type things, yeah. they're very different to what we'd assume. Yeah. So this does sound a very it's maybe, Japanese concept. I think it's going to be a very atmospheric game. Oh, probably yeah, definitely atmospheric. It'll be creepy yeah. as fuck, but I mean, it's mm. it's from software, of course. It's going to be creepy as fuck. So you expect you know random eyes in the wall, that type of shit, probably yeah. getting judged every time you do something. Um, but yeah, it's it's going to be more story based than the likes of Dark Souls and Bloodborne, so it's going to be the first time for a while we're going to get a proper kind of story based game from mm. from software, and it's going to be good to see because they usually do a really good story game. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Um, I'm I'm really debating buying it for PSVR, so I'll probably probably do a release day stream. Personally, for me, I always wait. No matter how much I may want the game, I always like to wait at least a month, see how it goes, yeah. see how far um, reviews will go, because the last thing you want to do is spend tons of money in a game on drop day and find out it's a buggy mess. Yeah. I'd rather just wait until it's got been tweaked after the first patch and be like, yeah, okay, it's working now. So let's go. Yeah. Like, I I bought um, F1 2018. Mm-hmm. Like... Uh, a bit three or four days after release. All right. And the career mode, fine. Uh, like single player modes, fine. Online, that was where the issue was. You get online championship, unranked and ranked modes. Uh-huh. Online championship is just playing with people who you know, who you invite into your game, playing with friends. Okay, cool. Yeah. Over the course of a season, and you can just set it to three, five laps. Uh, 25% race, 50% or full race. Mm-hmm. And you can set, you know, one shot qualifying, full qualifying, single session. The same with the three practice sessions, none short or long. All right, got it. And that works perfect, you know. When you do online, online. Oh, like, like competitive? Like um, match made online. Yeah, competitive, yeah. Um, whether it's ranked or unranked, um. Yeah, it's just a, it doesn't work. Um, so it will take you forever to find a match, like oh, to find right, a race, okay. and then when you find one, you either have to reset the console mm. and look for a different lobby, or just play single player, or stick in that match until you've done at least two races before it will actually let you out without crashing the game. No one's Christ. no one's username comes up. So you don't even know who you're going up against. Don't know who you're going up against. And, oh, it is just ridiculous. Nah, it's gash, man. But, like, see all the... All the kind of things they put in ranked matches. Things like your safety rating, your skill rating, your driver rank stuff. That all works perfect. 
Okay. It's just getting people's names to pop up, finding full lobbies. Mm. Like, oh, it's ridiculous. But do you know what? The game's good. The yeah. Game, and I, I mostly play kind of solo anyway. Mm-hmm. Or I'll play like online championship with Steven. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it's it's fine on that front anyway. So, the ways that I would intend to play it, it they work anyway. So I don't really care. Yeah. Right. Uh, next up, um, I like I said, I'm currently playing Spider Man, and it is fantastic. Don't give me any spoilers. I wasn't gonna. Good. Um, Wait, well, I don't get in the flow. No, 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 no. no. I, it's too new a game. Okay, cool. That I, I would not even dare <laughs> talk about how great it is to be fighting Iron Man on top of the Legion of Doom's DC logo. No, I, I was taking the mech. Yeah, no. Just gonna say I've got glass ball. Yep. <laughs> Anyway. Uh, not legitimately, though. I'm at the point where you fight Superman. Um... <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> just just wished you. Yeah, I kicked his butt. Um, <sighs> no, no, I'm... In all seriousness, I, I, I'm not going to tell you anything about it. Um, but it does have a new Game Plus coming. Nice. So, um... You don't have to, like, 100% the game or anything. You just need to complete the main scenario. mm mm-hmm. And any upgrades you have bought through the game, your new suits, your mods for the suit, all of that stuff, uh, that sticks with you through. All the stats you get from leveling up, they stay with you. And it means you can tackle the harder difficulties quicker Mm -hmm. if you're not quite good enough at the game to do it. Be that strategically, reaction times, or you like me and just kind of shoot at (laughs) Um... But yeah, that's we don't know when that's coming, but it's coming. So awesome. Yeah, it's um next up I we I I I always like gather all the stories and I show them to Mark before we do the the podcast and he kind of expressed a wee bit more interest at this one I think than I expected him to. If it's a game I'm thinking of, because you know sometimes you're like, is that a game I've played? I'm not sure. Yeah. I think it might be if it's a game I'm thinking of, if it is, I'm not oh. sure, but if it is, it was good. No longer I'm looking at the one, the no, more I'm not sure I'm. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. No, there was a game that came out, and it ended up being an Xbox exclusive RPG. Mm-hmm. Actually, one of the very few um, on the Xbox 360, and it was actually meant to also come out on the PS3. The game is called The Last Remnant. And the remake is going to be a PS4 exclusive. Mm -hmm. And that comes out December 6th. It was meant to come out on the PS3. uh, And this was 10 years ago. So Sony players are finally getting The Last Remnant. uh, And it's going to be remastered. So uh, graphical and engine updates. uh, While some of these things are changed, the story is exactly the same. And yeah, it's... It, it looked quite good. Um, it's going to be about 20 quid. Mm, not bad. And uh, again, like I said, when it originally came out, it was an Xbox exclusive. The remaster is going to be a PlayStation exclusive. So, uh, yeah, definitely going to be checking that out when it comes out. <laughs> uh, I know Mark will be to see if it's a game he thinks it is. <laughs> well, fuck's sake. I've got it down to like two games. I'm not too sure if it's your old one. Is that bad, man? Um, for Pokemon Go players out there. This amuses the fuck out of me. I'm not gonna now, lie. this is um like me and Mark play Pokemon Go. This is something that we actually think would be really really cool yeah. because we where we live there's there's quite a few Poke stops and gyms. There's well, been no, more where you added live, Lindsay's fuck all. There's been quite a few more added lately. Um, yeah, randomly just kind of pop up like huh? Yeah, like because the marina. I got was, another one as well. Yeah. Yeah, and there was a Poke stop um one of the churches up in Hillhead. Yeah, for some reason churches seem to be a cool, yeah. but. Well, one mm. of the churches in Hillhead was a Pokestop. That became a gym about three weeks ago. I didn't know that I could change us, decent. Um, huh, I wonder so if there's yeah. like a amount of traffic it gets. It could well be. Because, like, uh, like, yeah, the one at Sainsbury's is like pure random. Yeah, it's like, make, make it a gym, you know, because fuck it. 
Then I went up the marina, and you're like, oh, okay, this is a bit out of the way. Well, but... there's now also a new Pokemon, Pokestop at the marina. Yeah, I wonder if that's why, though. But yeah, mm. there's there's new Pokestops popping up everywhere, so we may not actually need this in Kirky. Probably not. Um, but uh, the ability to nominate local landmarks as Pokestops has been something that we've all wanted. Uh, well, Niantic has announced plans to implement Pokestop nominations, and the first wave of beta testing will roll out soon, but it's only available in Brazil and South Korea, and the requirements are to be level 40 and over the age of 18. Ah, okay. Yep. Uh, trainers who meet these requirements will submit photographs and descriptions of potential Pokestops. They will be reviewed by in- experienced Ingress users. Now, Ingress is the, for those who don't know, is the game Niantic made before Pokemon Go, and it is the the geographing for uh, Ni- uh, for Ingress Niantic used as the base for Pokemon Go. So Niantic eventually became the base for Pokemon Go. Yeah. Uh, obviously with slightly different mechanics. A little bit. But overall, it's pretty much very very similar. So Niantic have uh, suggested locations such as public parks, libraries, interesting pieces of art or architecture, major transport hubs, uh, things like private property, uh, places without direct access to pedestrians, or locations on school property and childcare centres will not be approved. Wonder why. Um, There is a more comprehensive guide to suggested locations and places that are prohibited on the Niantic site. Um, It also gives you a step-by-step uh, guide to submitting new Pokestops. Um, there is a limit to five nominations a day. Players are encouraged to take photos and explain why it would make a good addition to the game. It's not yet announced uh, when the feature will be available to everyone, but Niantic has said it will gradually expand to other countries. But I can imagine if you are living in a city, you're probably surrounded with them anyway. Yeah. It would be more arguably useful just for folk who live in wee towns. Yeah. Um... So, one of the things we're going to talk about is a thing called uh, Switch Online. Mm-hmm. And it's got, there's two bits to it. Well, one of them is obviously like PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live. You require it to play online. Yeah. However, they're doing something similar to what PlayStation are doing, where if the game does not have a offline mode, you do not need a subscription to play online. All right. So, Fortnite is a good example of this because it's the only one that I can think of on the Switch. Um, there's other, there, there's ones like, I know that uh, Black Ops 4, that's online only. So it'll be like that on PlayStation as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's, you don't require, like, you don't require a PlayStation Plus subscription, but you do require a, a an account with an email that can access the PlayStation Store. Yes. Um, to play online, but you don't need the PlayStation Plus to play like Fortnite because it doesn't have a single player only mode. Mm-hmm. It's the same with uh, Final Fantasy fourteen and other things like that. But like GTA GTA Online, because that's part of GTA Five. Yeah. Uh, you can play GTA Five, but you can't play GTA Online without a PlayStation Plus. It's so just a bit like hmm. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you won't require t- the Nintendo Switch Online subscription service to play Fortnite. Um, another thing that the uh, Switch Online, it gives you uh, save data that goes to the cloud. Again, like Steam and Xbox and PlayStation. Ah, so like any consoles get lost or yeah. possibly stolen, I guess. You can still retrieve any save data. Which is um, yeah, pretty awesome. So, but the... the I always, as always, like when they say, "Oh yeah, save data is going to be in the cloud." I mean, not all games. Pokemon Let's Go and FIFA nineteen uh, will not be saved to the cloud. Um, there's always the question of what happens if you forget to renew your subscription. Yeah. Now, Xbox, PlayStation, when you forget to renew your subscription, you can't access it, mm-hmm. but it's there. All right, and you get it back when you renew your subscription Ah, Uh, but at the same time you can always put it on a USB drive or portable hard drive uh, I'd probably end up doing that seems easier which the feature the Switch doesn't have ah Uh, now damn the 
the, the FAQ for Nintendo Switch Online implies that cloud data would be lost the moment a Nintendo Switch Online account becomes inactive. So, like, the minute uh, your subscription lapses, that's your saves gone. Now, we don't know if that is the case, but um, that's what the FAQ implies. So, we'll see. Classic games in the NES collection mm-hmm. uh, will not be removed unless the user chooses to do it manually uh, and these items are stored on the Switch system but at the same time can't be accessed without a Switch online membership like your PS uh, PS Plus free uh, monthly games yeah yeah um, you download them and you've got them for life but you cannot play them unless, unless you your it. subscription is active got it um, so yeah that's I think that's pretty much tells you all you need to know there pretty much um it does look like a good service um obviously to maintain online servers you can't give away free online play um well you can but it's not a good unless you are making tons of money off of like like steam being a games marketplace there they're making money off other games being there Mm -hmm. so like you put the game on steam they get like i think 20% 20% of the, the profits from the game and then they've got like they get commission from like skin sales and other things for like CSGO and stuff Aye. so because there's so much going on there they get commission from all the DLC and all the unnecessary loot DLC, boxes yeah. and things like that they get commission from all that so they can afford to do free online service mm-hmm but Nintendo and Sony and X, uh, and uh, Microsoft they can't really afford to do dedicated online servers uh, that are like for free so uh, they have to charge especially considering they're always selling consoles below cost mm-hmm. like every console is sold at, I think about a 15% loss with the hopes of making it all back on games which you probably tend to which they generally do yeah um, but that's why you've got the subscription services as well mm-hmm. to also help make up that cost as well. Um, so yeah, it's great. It looks to be cheaper than Sony and Microsoft, and they also have the family plan, which uh, looks to be about thirty pound a year for up to seven switches. Oh, do know so, up to seven? Yep. Jesus, up to seven family members. So mm, not bad. So yeah, there is that as well. Mm. Um. But no, the last thing to talk about uh, was the Nintendo Direct. So obviously we've spoken about Final Fantasy and we've mentioned a wee bit about the Nintendo Switch Online service. Yeah. But there was also, uh, uh, they started off with an announcement for a new game, which was Luigi's Mansion 3. Which actually looks really decent, not going to lie. Yeah, that looks fantastic. They also spoke about Luigi's Mansion on the DS, like to keep players, to keep fans of the series... Um, playing the game it's now got multiplayer mode so if both players own the game they can work through Luigi's Mansion cooperatively on their DS's yeah. and if one doesn't own the game they can go to the gallery and do like kind of boss rush mode mm-hmm. where you just fight various bosses which looks fantastic oh uh, just for a quick clarification the uh, second player is like a slamer version of Luigi from the looks of it just break um, your vein motherfucker the second player is well, I the, the co-op player looks yeah. like that on the other person's. But obviously, if you're playing it, and then you're Luigi. Yeah, it, like you you see Luigi as Luigi uh, when you're playing him, regardless of whether you're player one or two. Yeah, and then like just your co-op buddy looks like a Slimer version. Yeah. Um, there was also Kirby's extra epic yarn. I didn't think that looked good. It looks good. That annoys me. It's like, what is that uh, actual yarn monster thing called that PS PlayStation had? Unraveled. Unraveled. Yeah, it literally looks like that, but, you know, cartoons. More cartoony. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. Oh, very cartoony. It looks so much fun as well. Um, now, obviously, there's Kirby's Epic Yarn came out for the Wii many, many moons ago. Never heard it until today, so there uh, you go. So it, it, it does have more mini games where you can play as King DDD <laughs> and Meta Knight. What? King DDD. King DDD. Um, so yeah, you've got you know many games where you can play as these characters, 
And it does also have, I think, about... I can't remember, they said, they gave us a number for how many more levels, mm. but there was there was also more levels added. All right, yeah. Uh, and new abilities and power-ups and ways to use the weapons and stuff as well. So basically just it's updated to shit. Yeah, uh, and it looks good. Um, what else was it? It was uh, New Super Mario's U Deluxe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which also has new Super Luigi U, which was a, a bonus game which was sold separately. Mm-hmm. Well, they're both being packaged together for the Switch. Because logically. Uh, so that means there's over uh, 168 courses in the game from both Super Mario Bros. U and Super Luigi Bros. U. That just sounds mental. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, it's also got a couple of extra characters. Uh, Nabbit, who takes absolutely no damage from enemies whatsoever, just grabs coins, which basically would sounds be... Sounds cheating as fuck, but okay. It would be basically what I would give my nephew. Yeah. Sorry, you won't lose. Just just run. Run fast. But that's only because he's, what, six months old. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> just clarify that. That's when you just hit him out, like, legs, because that's, you know, that's what the kid's going to do. Until um, he throws the, uh, the controller and then you're like, shit. <laughs> no. As long as he doesn't throw the switch itself, it's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, and... Uh, You've also got, was it Toadette, who if you get the crown power up, becomes Peachette. I don't even get the fuck that. I was like, okay. It looks like Peach, but it's actually Toadette. No, I mean just the two, like, cool character. I'm like, who? <laughs> and uh, they've got power up where if they fall off the edge of the screen. Like, they get like a second chance kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, it's really cool. They've added some new characters to it as well. Uh up to four player modes uh, locally. Mm-hmm. It just looks so much fun. They also talk, spoke about the new Super Mario Party. No, it was which decent. Looks really fun. Uh, so so many games. Holy shit! Yeah, there uh, was over eighty brand new mini games for the board game mode. The board game mode looked really cool. I'm not even gonna yeah. lie. No, it was decent. And you've also now got Toad's Rec Room, where you can take two switches on a local network, and then just draw a line down them to show where the connection is mm-hmm. between the two switches and then it links both of them up into the same arena which is really really cool oh that's yeah. how it works yeah yep yeah. and you can play just some of the mini games in that kind of space mm-hmm. if it's ones where it's like a top down view or something like that yeah uh, they were talking about Mega Man 11 which looked fantastic Mega Man, that's a game that hasn't really changed as much, no, if you know what I mean. But that, I think that's kind of one of the good things about it. Is well, unless you, was it, was it ignore, was it Hero Number 9 or some shit? M- Mighty Number 9. Mighty, Mighty Number 9. That was made by the original creator of Mega Man, but it wasn't officially Mega Man, it was a spiritual successor. Exactly, I didn't um, really succeed shit. Great. You succeeded yeah. fuck all. It was not great, but um, in the game, like, it's compatible with the Mega Man Amiibos that are already available. Yeah, so you get uh, shit, what was it? Like E-tanks and other cool equipment from, like, the essential equipment from the game. You get one a day if you just tap the Amiibo. Yeah, but wasn't it, like, a power boost from using one and yeah, I'd, a speed boost from another, was it? I just remember them saying E-tanks. Okay, well, we focused on different things. No, no, you're talking about the double gear system. Ah, uh, double gear, whatever the that is. The double gear system allows you to move so fast the time slows down, or power up your weapons. Yeah. Not at the same time, obviously, so that's unfair. Actually, you probably could do both at the same time, because oh, it's a double awesome. gear system, so I imagine it would be two separate things. Um, fair enough. We'll see. I don't know. We don't know for sure. They didn't really explain it, whether it was both at the same time or one or the other, but um, it could be. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It was that. Uh, I'm trying to think what else there was. There was obviously Final Fantasy, which we were both really excited for. Um, was we additions to like Pokemon? Like, do you have like, you know, apparently you can change hairstyles and that? Oh, I just yeah. think po- it's, it's a very small thing, yes. but it's, it's still awesome. Uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, they, they did announce there that things like the HMs, so Cut, Strength, Surf, Fly. Yeah, they all did loan special versions. All of yeah, special versions. The only Pikachu or Eevee, depending on your starter, can learn. Which looks really cool. Um, there's special moves that only Pikachu and Eevee can learn. Okay. 
Um, I'm thinking it's going to be things like Volt Tackle and Flame Charge and stuff. Yeah. Like non-Gen 1 moves. Which are quite a lot. A, considering it's a Gen 1 game. Yeah. Because it's a remake of Yellow. Hmm. Probably like what well, Iron Tail as well, because apparently yeah. I think Pikachu used that a lot, didn't he? Yeah. Especially from uh, Advanced Generation onwards. Hmm. Which would be season six of the anime, which is uh, Ruby, uh, Ruby Sapphire Emerald in the games Gen Four, Three, Gen Three. <laughs> Anywho, I just point out because like the idea you can ruffle her hair and change into different hairstyles. Yes, I was going to do that, but then then, no, you, no, then you went. But yeah, cute hairstyles, so you can give like little like spiky hair does and yeah. shit. Make yeah, them look like flock of seagulls. Oh, for fuck. Add some flair to the hair. Okay, what else was there? Because I, I, I no. That was it. Okay, um, uh, yeah. No, at least on the Pokemon Go front. Yeah. Uh, next, um, Crash Team, ra- not Crash Team Racing, uh, Team Sonic Racing. Yeah. Okay. I, I I don't get it. He's the fastest thing alive. Give me a car. <laughs> Why? Because mascot racing. Logically, he should be like a referee or some shit. He just runs along beside each car going, you're going, you know, you're cheating. Stop. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, but there was that. Uh, uh, Game Freak has a new IP coming. And this one looks really cool. No, yes. right? It's called Town. Town, yes. Um, so the whole game takes place in a town and you've got to investigate why there's suddenly monsters popping up, save the village from We'll save the town from the monsters and work with the townsfolk to come up with solutions to defeating said monsters. So whether or not maybe you build like town respect or honour or you build that rapport with individual members. Yeah. Well, but it didn't really explain it too much. So far it is looking like it is. Just, because uh, it is an early concept. Yeah. So. From what we've seen it looks great but this seems, from what we've seen it's just you play as one character and maybe it looks like what your actions are reflects what happens. Yeah. You, if you're a wee bit of a dick, the town's going to be like, well, do you know what? We're, we're going to help, but not you, ourselves. Yeah. Um, although town is just the working title for it, the title may change. Town sounds kind of cool. I it like does it. sound really cool. And it looks really nice. Like, obviously, it's, it's still early. Mm. They've made enough, they've developed enough of the game that they've been able to make a trailer for it. And it does look... And it, it does look really, really fun. It's like a midway between Final Fantasy and Pokemon, I'd say, just from the style yeah. and the monster we've seen. Yeah, definitely. Um, what else was there? Uh, the Pokemon Switch Online. The Final There's Fantasy, Diablo 3. Diablo 3. Yes, Diablo 3 looks really, really good. And if you use uh, the Amiibo figures, mm-hmm. you can spawn hordes of enemies with lots of shinies. Oh, that's how it works. Lots of shiny right. things. And was it a Ganondorf or whatever the fuck his yes, name is? Yes, you also get armor that makes you look like Ganondorf. Yeah, so it looks, it looks quite cool how they're integrating all these older games and making them just yeah. new. Uh, a bit jealous, Starlink. Oh, uh, your Starlink, he's... What? Right, this is what I'm confused about. Is that his game or is it no, like... No, it's not a Star Fox game. Right, so it's more like he's Starlink being is out, added into it. Starlink is out for PC... PS4, Xbox, and Switch. Right. The Switch version has Star Fox uh, content exclusively on it. Because that makes the game look fun to at play. At the Ubisoft uh, E3. Yeah. They invited oh, Shigeru yeah. Miyamoto, the creator of Star that, Fox. Yeah, and he up. brought out his big, massive like, amiibo of the ship. Yeah. Well, right. no, no. It was the Starlink figure. Oh, wow. Starlink is a Toys to Life game. Oh, uh, that's what put me off. Never and, remember. And you build your own ships, and you can build. You get a Star Fox kit with the um, Switch version, which won't work with the other versions. Um, but they, they showed you Falco, Fox McCloud, Slippy, and <laughs> and Peppy in HD. <laughs> That's so and shit. It looked so I'm good. Falco. I'm Fox. I'm what's that one? Peppy. Peppy, and I'm Slippy. <laughs> like, what? Why are you Slippy? Why are you not Froggy or Toady? No, no. No, I'm Slippy. Two okay, barrel. Mate. <laughs> oh, no, no. Two barrel. Uh, um, but yeah, they showed you that and they showed you... I don't even know what character it is. Uh, I never played much Star Fox. Um, Fuck knows. Oh, the, the final guy. 
Dark Fox. I want to call I, I, I'm thinking it's like Dark Fox. Mega McLeod. Fox. Um, so we've got this like evil fox. And just it like, no, it looks it. like Fox McLeod, just dark. When it, with an eye patch. Yeah, instead of the kind of visor. Gla- no. Um But yeah, like instead of being kind of like brown and white, it's gray dark and, and gray. Dark and gray. Yeah. He looks pretty red. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be another shadow thing, isn't it? Possibly. He ends up kind of looking cooler than the original, and you're like, you shouldn't have yeah. done this. I, I'd rather play as that one. Where you go. Um, and I suppose all that's really left to talk about is Smash. <sighs> oh, no, you did forget one. Civilization Five. Oh, yeah, Civ Five. Oh, and City Skylines. And yeah, Yoshi. it's different ones. What? And Yoshi. Ah, uh, fuck Yoshi. <laughs> Okay, Yoshi looks interesting from purely from the perspective of you can, ironically, you can change your perspective. Yeah, um, but yeah, Yoshi's Crafted World. It's kind of uh, it's it's the new mainline Yoshi game, and it does take place in kind of an arts and crafts style world. You can change your perspective. You so can... you have to play games repeat. Well, like, games, sorry, uh, levels repeatedly. Yeah, play one way, play the other way, you'll find more stuff. Yeah, you can flip the perspective so you can see everything from the back. It's like, obviously, this is like built up with cardboard and it meant to look like a kind of stage. I did like that idea. It was kind of funny. That looks good. Because, like, one side you're seeing, like, clouds and shit flying around and turning around. It's like, you see the tape with all the cardboard. You're like, oh, yeah. what? That was just weird. Well, then. Um, so, yeah, I think that looks really cool. Uh, Civilization Six. Uh, yeah. Um, was it Six? Yeah. Oh, what's six? Fuck me. Sorry. Um, it looks it looks really good. It, it looks like it's going to run really well on the Switch. It did do look really um, fancy. Not gonna it's going to have local four player modes, which could be really really cool. So it's going to play against Jack because he'll dominate your ass. That's not true. I'm not. I, I'm actually really bad at Civilization. He says that, and a week later, he's like, <laughs> "No, okay, you're right." No, I, I I've never played Civilization, but I played um. Uh, Age of Empires. Oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, you know what one I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I played that and I was so bad at it. I hate both types of games. So like, this one looks is I enjoyed them. Yeah, I was just so bad at it. No, nah, I just don't like the idea of them. I'm very much RPG orientated. One character, do your thing. Not all right. I have to try and figure out how to work an army and mm. all these. Sh- things and why can't I do this? Oh right, I don't have enough blah 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 blah. Yeah. No, I hate it. There was also City Skylines, which is kind of uh the same but scarier. It's kind of like Sim City. Well actually it is just essentially Sim City. But like it's more obviously about actual building. Yeah. See it does look interesting from perspective of learning about literally how cities work. Yeah. It's something that can consider like it could literally be used almost I don't know if it could be Logically used as a teaching tool, but I feel like you probably could if you take it down to like a primary school. You're like, well, this is how you build cities, right? You need to make sure you have these things in place before you can put in these forms of infrastructure. Yeah. And once these are done, this is how it's all laid out and how it's kept functional. Yeah, which is fine. But then it says then you can follow around one character. Yeah, and you're like I, I think that's what... that's creepy, man. It's like so, let's see it's... what this one character does all day. You go to the grocery store. I wonder what you're getting. The thing I like uh-huh. about this, though, is, like, well, yes, you can just follow around one character all day. You can play God and all that, right? But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking like when it comes to the it. city building, yeah. it's a lot more in-depth than, like, SimCity was. Because with this, you can, you don't just, like, build, like, a bus station. and Because when you do that in SimCity, the, at least the SimCity that I played, I think I played like SimCity Four, mm-hmm. like which released back in like two thousand or something on like Windows XP or whatever. Yeah. Um. But it like you build the, the bus station and it would just the bus routes would be made like automatically generated. Now you've got to build everything. But that's when you've got to create the bus routes yourself and all that. I think it's a lot more in depth than Sim SimCity was, and I I really like that idea of it. Like imagine it would be a lot of. Like gratification for like when you make a city work flawlessly, yes. but at the same time, I don't know. I'm just not into the whole god complex kind of thing. I'd rather just be like, I want this one character to go and have a cool story, and then me be like, I like the story. Yeah, there was another thing we forgot about actually. Oh, here we go. Board games. Yes, that was quite cool. Actually, so, not gonna lie. Um, we're getting tabletop style games for mm-hmm. the Switch coming. Yeah. Um, three that have been. Announced is releasing very soon mm-hmm. is Carcerone. Yeah. 
Oh, Salt Lake RPG one, yeah? No? Yes. Uh, you had um, Lord of the Rings, the living card game. Yes, yeah, so uh, it's just a card game, but it looks kind of cool. Kind of like uh, Gwent, maybe? Close yeah, to that. or Hearthstone. Hearthstone's a better example, actually. Um, and the other one was... Ah, Pandemic. Yeah, that one looked really cool. It's literally like the old uh, Flash kind of game. But no, like... no, it's the opposite. Is it? The Flash game, you created the virus and you had to get it to spread. This oh. is the virus is already spread and you've got to uh, eradicate it. Oh, that's not as fun. No, I like the idea. Like, it still, ha, it still the uses all the same mechanics. But it's just the opposite. It's way just the opposite side of the the coin. I can't tell if that be. Well, maybe maybe if like they make fun. it, they might kind of flip it like DLC. Yeah, oh, that's that's kind of cool idea still. And they have also announced two games that are coming. Mm-hmm. Now these are all being made by one development company. Ah, okay. Uh, so they're not going to be rushing them out, but they're going to be making it as many as possible, as quickly as possible. Yeah. But they're not just going to be firing them out rapid. Um, one is a dungeon crawler based on the card game Munchkin. Mm-hmm. And the other one is the classic board game Catan. Never heard of it. Um, oh, it looks fantastic. I've never played Catan, but I've seen people playing Catan, and it just looks so good. Um... Again, that's if you're into kind of tabletop board games like D and D and stuff as well. So well, I suppose that's a benefit of playing it online. It's all there I, for you. I, I do imagine that we might end up getting D and D for the Switch as well at some point. Like oh, I'm maybe not, I'm, even Magic: The Gathering. I'm not gonna lie. I probably would sit and play it if it was properly online. Like if you didn't need to like have to deal with friend. <laughs> that sounds horrible. I don't like dealing with new people. I think I, think I would. Definitely be playing it if I if it was going to be like local co op. That would be kind of cool, or even online that could be interesting. Yeah, online with friends though, not not like matchmaking, but online. Matchmaking could be interesting as well, actually, if you're wanting a pure challenge. Yeah, I suppose, but I I I'd like the idea of like. like oh, you like sitting like, beside your mates and you're going for a story would be cool. I, yeah, not gonna you've lie. Got the, you've got like, uh, Big Bang Theory. They had D and D night for uh, like every week. They no, Walkins and Bison that yeah. So um, yeah, I would I would really think that would be a really cool way for people who don't really want to pay the upwards of a hundred pound for a full yeah D and D kit because it's not just like the the book, it's also the maps and the character tokens and it's not just for the one person because you can't just play D and D one person. It sounds a bit sad. Um, so you've got to have like the game master and at least four people playing, so. Um, like it would be a lot cheaper doing it by getting it on like the Switch or something mm-hmm. just having it all set up for you so yeah. you don't need to purely like, panic especially for for beginners who might not know how to set it up plus it might be a bit more immersive like seeing it all there you can look for it at your leisure if you do make a character yeah. you can get some idea of what they might look like even if you don't see them actually doing stuff Yeah, it's still like okay my character is oh, oh that's a big what a half orc looks like cool yep. And um, yeah, I, I'm really excited to see what other board games we come up with. Um, I imagine we'll probably end up getting like Monopoly. Actually, I think there's already Monopoly for the Switch, and but we'll see. We'll see what other games we get for that. I'm excited to see what board games and card games we get. Maybe I I doubt it, but maybe we might get Cards Against Humanity. Ooh, that could be interesting. I don't know. The one I was thinking of was oh, shit, what's that game we play whenever we have the time. Uh, fuck. You get wedges and shit. Trivial Pursuit? Yes. But like a constantly updating version of that? Yeah. That would be really cool. And that could be solid. Because that involves. Like, like, you end up buying like one box, but it's like. It could be dated by a good yeah. few years. So you can like. It's good, but you're like. Well, yeah. yeah. But yeah, no. With board games, you should, I suppose you're, you're hitting the gold mine because there's so much stuff you could logically yeah. do. Definitely, um, because it's not even that. Like, because you could go with uh, again. We spoke earlier about Fortnite Monopoly. Mm-hmm. There's Fortnite Monopoly, Star Wars Monopoly, Star Trek Monopoly, Football Monopoly, Monopoly Empires. Um, Jesus. Glasgow, Paris, Glasgow, Tokyo. No, there is. There's Glasgow edition, Scottish Fucking edition, hell. British edition, London edition, um, English edition. Uh, yeah, there's there's the city ones and 
there's the themed ones like Harry Potter, Star Wars, Star Trek. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there are so many of them. There's Pokemon Monopoly. Uh, so yeah, there are so many of them that you could realistically just have so many variants of Monopoly on like the Switch. Yeah. So we could see that. Cluedo. It just doesn't end. Christ. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we could see all of these coming out soon. Uh, yeah, and then we ended off with um, a new character announcement for Smash. Oh Christ! Yeah. Um, and that is Isabel from Animal Crossing. Yes, it is Timo. Don't get me wrong. It's just here's Teemo. the thing, though, right? See, fans of Smash and fans of Nintendo franchises have been over the moon that Isabel's finally in Smash. Um, and after that, they announced Animal Crossing's coming to the Switch in 2019 as well. Um, Ugh. yeah, no, I, I would say it was a bloody good Nintendo Direct. It was pretty good, not gonna lie. I mean, obviously, I'm pretty sure you probably agree with me. The highlight uh, was definitely Final Fantasy coming to the Switch. Actually, no, no. I thought Town was a really cool idea. Town. Uh, I stole it from like, ooh. That was that's getting kind of cool, man. Uh, well, for me, like town would definitely highlight, but the the big point for of me course was for you it's going to be Final, Final Fantasy. Fantasy. Um, the the board games uh, has really got me excited. If uh, I can take off properly, that would be really interesting. And yeah, the yeah every, every, everything that I think looked decent. The, the what they didn't really do anything particularly bad. So no, there was nothing. There was nothing that was really a letdown. Like even the things that. We were not quite into, like yourself, not being quite into the Animal Crossing stuff. I still, I still get it as a good franchise, just I'm not into it. It's a good crossing for the two franchises. Mm-hmm. And, and Animal Crossing's not had a new game for about six years or so. So it's about mm-hmm. time they refreshed the game. I mean, it's got the, the Pocket, like the mobile game. All oh, right, uh, okay. Pocket Camp. But it's... I was wondering why I kept talking about camping and Smash. I'm like, what oh, the fuck's camping? Yeah. Um, okay. But... It's not really a proper game. It's just a kind of mobile game, and but it's huh. not had a proper game in six years. So uh, fair enough, man. It's uh, I did feel it was about time we got a new Animal Crossing. I figured with the Switch, it would be kind of nowish that we'd be getting it. Mm. Sounds good. Sounds good. Uh, oh no, no, no! There was one more thing that we forgot, and it was a game that you really liked the look of, uh, Damon X Machina. Oh, it's random as shit. It's like a cross between. Oh, right. Gundam. Zone, Gundam, Zone of Enders. What's that one where you jump at your robot? Uh, it's like an army type of shit. You got a sequel. Uh, Xbox exclusive, I think. Fuck no. I never really played many Xbox games. It was kind of big. It was like you go around in this big mech. It's like an army war zones. No, not a clue. My Someone brother was, would probably know if he was still awake. ones haven't played it. Um, but yeah, it just generally looks pretty cool. Just very heavily, like, you know... Well, it, in the trail kind of came off as heavily, like, Zone of Enders, you, like, go around this big mech, you can upgrade it with whatever you scavenge, but then you can jump out of it to explore a world, but even then your character you play as can be update, um, updated, upgraded as well, so it comes yeah, off as it, very Deus Ex, as you yeah, pointed Deus Ex. out. Uh, it, like, when, one of the ones where the, it was the, the eye augmentations, it mm. was very like the way that uh, Adam Jensen looks, um, it, with the, the way the sunglasses just kind of slide out, and yeah. they do look like just like that. And this is actually him getting over his eyes, we don't know yet. It could be pretty gruesome. I've no idea. Um, but you know, it it do, it does look like a fantastic game. Mm. Um, I, I will probably grab that as well. I mean, I'll, I'll probably just grab as many games as I can for the Switch. Fuck <laughs> hell, man! Uh, you're gonna be eating ramen and shit from now on. Definitely. <laughs> nah, I think ramen will be even too expensive for me. <laughs> Slice of bread a day. Glass of water. So. <laughs> no, no, I'll still have enough money for my monsters. And cigarettes, my probably. Uh, aye. And my hot sauce. Oh, for fuck. <laughs> I've got a space of bread up somehow. Get some taste. So I'm not so no just eating dry bread. That's what it is. Ugh. Nasty. Put some hot sauce on it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that I think that's that's us. Aye, that's us, man. That's us. 
Uh, so yes, that has been us here at Gaming Ken. As always, I've been Jack, and with me has been Mark. I'm Mark. And we do hope you enjoyed the episode. We do hope you join us for the next one, where uh, I imagine we'll just kind of be talking where our topic will be just be where we want games to go, not in a hardware sense, but in the way of how games are made. Not so much um, software, but themes and stuff that we may not have seen yet. Uh, okay. We'd love to see your themes that we've had before, but not in a while, like to have them revisited and stuff. Okay, I'm not going to lie, you kind of scared me with what you were talking about. I was like, how can I contribute? Oh, that's it, I can contribute. Sound. Okay, cool. Yeah, sounds yeah. decent. Um, so yes, as always, we've been Gaming Ken. We thank you for joining us. And remember, there's always room for you here at Gaming Ken if you want to be our friend. Hey Stay there. safe out there. Bye.